The world capital of basketball this weekend, beautiful Berlin, Germany. This is Turkish Airlines. Seven days. Nisinenok.com. Denny's Bank. Siesta. Tadim. Lenovo. Burger King. And Seg. Official global sponsors in association with the Turkish Airlines Euro League. This is setting for Clash of Titans tonight as the very best two teams on the continent this season. Seska Moscow and Fenerbahce Istanbul face off with the trophy waiting at courtside for the winner in the Turkish Airlines Euro League Championship game. Mercedes Benz Arena will be packed to the rafters as one of the most unique stories in basketball history unfolds with longtime friends and coaching partners, Joko Bradovic and Dimitri Zatoudis, who won one of their five titles together here in Berlin when they coached for Panathinaikos together, face each other for the first time with the continental title hanging in the balance. Good evening, I'm Frank Lawler from EuroLeague TV, joined again by former EuroLeague champ Joe Arlaukas. And Joe, as we watch the teams arriving a little earlier, we have two powerhouses in this championship game with all the ambition, confidence, and talent to win it. Man, this atmosphere is amazing, Francesca. This year, the toughest schedule by far. First place in the regular season, first place in Group F, which to me, without a doubt, was the hardest group in EuroLeague history. How they do it with focus, leadership, experience, and here they are in a championship game in Berlin. It was a long road, but one well journeyed. And this Russian squad won't be complete tonight without a W. They'll have to go through a very difficult opponent, and that's Fenerbahce. Last year's loss in the semis was a learning lesson for this team. Now they look to take that experience and use it this year in a beautiful, they look to hoist that beautiful EuroLeague trophy in about two hours from now. How are they going to do it with a mix of intense physical play on both sides of the floor? They play hard, they play aggressive on offense and defense, but they love to punish opposing teams and suffocate them with their defensive prowess. And the X Factor, Selko Brodovich on the bench. The players are on the floor warming up, which means we are on our way to tip off in the Turkish Airlines Euro League Championship game with Seska gunning for its seventh continental title after winning the last in 2008 and Fenerbahce trying for its first. As we make our way to tip off, let's take a closer look at our finalists in our game analysis. Two star-filled teams, Ceska Moscow and Fenerbahce Istanbul, whose head coaches are the closest of friends, are ready to decide which will raise the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague trophy in tonight's do-or-die championship game. Long-time coaching partners Jelko Bradovic of Fenerbahce and Dimitri Satoudis of Ceska worked side-by-side -side while winning five EuroLeague titles together, making this duel for the championship almost a family affair. Absolutely different because after 13 years that he spent together now, thinking about this, that he's an open, open adventure and this final game of your league is really very strange, but for another side, very special. The human relation and everything, the family relation, it looks kind of strange, but, but uh, you know, after the hugs and after the good luck for the beginning of the game, when, it, when the ball goes in the air, each of us uh, will try to help his, his own team to win the title. Ceska took its semi-final victory on Friday with this season's MVP, the relentless Nondo Ducolo, setting a record with 30 points. He and fellow All-Euroleague guard Milos Teodosic will be the first problems that Fenerbahce's defense must solve. It will be very difficult. He's an excellent player. Not one specific player, I believe this is a team draw, but not only Nando Ducolo. They have a lot of, lot of good players, very important players, and I believe it will be a mistake if we only think about one of the court. Ceska will also rely on its little big man and winner of the Best Defender Trophy, Kyle Hines, to keep punching well above his weight against Fenerbahce's twin towers, Jan Vesely and Epe Udo. Kyle is playing big, you know, he, he's playing huge, I would say. So. Fenerbahce looked to young Bogdan Bogdanovic to save its own semi-final by scoring nine of his 18 points in overtime to finally get the club's first ever Final Four victory. You know how much I trust to him. He came up and down in his game, also logical because, you know, for how he's young is he's, he's normal, but this that I talk, if you want to be leader, you must play 
every every single second on the court with good concentration. This is that right now he's not able to do, but anyhow, he's leader of the team without any question. Fenerbahce will need two players who won the title together before, Kostas Lukas and Pero Antic, to bring their experience to bear in the championship game. There are problems that they can they can put to us, but I, I hope we will have also. Uh, the opportunity and we do have the quality to put a lot of problems to their defense too. With their coaching partnership having made them champions over and over together, this time either Abradovic or Etudis must take the trophy for himself and his team. We know each other very good, but the thing, and I know Dimitris and also uh, myself, we'll try to prepare some, some things. In this level to surprise opponent team is very difficult. Definitely, uh, Dimitris and Jelko they, they will try to help their teams and uh, they have an influence on, uh, on the X and O's and philosophy. But players are those that they're going to bring the, the glory. We are back live at Mercedes Benz Arena in Berlin. And you're looking at the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Champions Trophy in the middle of the court. And one of these two teams, Seska Moskva or Fenerbahce Istanbul, are going to be lifting that in just a couple hours. We're going to get a look at the player introductions for tonight's Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Championship game. And the crowd is getting into it already. Seska being introduced first. Get a look at their roster on the screen in a second, and as far as we know, everyone is healthy and ready to play. But all eyes will be on their exquisite pair of all year league guards this year's MVP, Nando De Colo, and former MVP, Milos Teodosic. De Colo broke the final four record for points in a do or die final four game in Friday's semifinal when he scored 30 points, while Teodosic is the most prolific three-point shooter this season in EuroLeague and one of the most spectacular assist makers in EuroLeague history. There you get a look at the Seska Moscow lineup. We're going to see who the starters are tonight for head coach Dimitri Satoudis in just a second. But they're ready to go. They've been focused and they have just run through a tough, tough schedule this season in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague and made the grade in the semifinal and are ready to challenge Fenerbahce over here. The starters for Seska Moscow, Nando De Colo, Corey Higgins, Nikita Kurbanov, Kurbanov, Andre Voronsevich, and Kyle Hines coming out first tonight for head coach Dimitris Atutis and very much uh, many of the starters that he's had during the season. Corey Higgins was a halftime starter. The same with Nikita Kurbanov, but pretty much who they counted on in a lot of games. What a, what a luxury to have Dicolo on the floor and have someone like Teodosic coming in. As you said, one of the most prolific three-point scorers of all time. Plus, a guy that gets everybody involved on the court. He sees people that most people would never see. A couple steps ahead of the game. But this game, this team is deep, very deep. And right now, we're looking at another deep team in Fenerbahce. Fenerbahce, of course, headed by the great Joko Branovic. Remember, no one has won more EuroLeague titles than his eight times. And he too has a wealth of options to choose from. It's all EuroLeague selections, three of them, Jan Vesely, Epe Udo, and Luigi Tatome in his lineup. But they are not only backed up, but often led by the youngest regular player we're likely to see on either team tonight, Bogdan Bogdanovic, who was Fenerbahce's hero in their overtime semifinal victory on Friday. Now we get a look at that. Fenerbahce roster for tonight's game, but the young guys, Bogdan Bogdanovic, nine of his 18 points in overtime after Fenerbahce uh, basically snuck in there on a on a great shot by Kostas Lukas against uh, Labrador Kucha Vitore Gaste to uh, take that game to overtime, and that's where the young guy, Bogdan Bogdanovic, stood tall and made it happen. Here we see the starters, Kosta Slukas, Bogdan Bogdanovic, Luigi Tatome, Nikola Kalinic, and Jan Vesely will be the first guys on the floor for head coach Joko Obradovic. And that's interesting, right. Joe, because in the case of uh, Slukas, he's only started six out of 20 games this year. Kalinic about halftime, so it's a big move to put well, Slukas. Right, right off the bat, we're looking at something about Zelko Obradovic. We talk about Zelko all the time, about his prowess, his awareness in game, what he's doing. All of a sudden, 
Udo's on the bench to start the game, and you got Collins in the game. Interesting move. And we're going to get a look at what our head coaches had to say to their players in the locker room right before this game, starting with Dimitris Atutis of Seska Moscow. It's very important today, our small, to be involved in that. Actually, not only bigs, the bigs also are required over there, but small, you need to help on boards. And we need to help on boards in both situations. And I, I don't want to see any, any doubts uh, on offense when we have a shots, when we have an open looks, need to be protected, need to be supported actually by at least two players over there. At the same time, we need the balance, of course, defensive balance, but at least two. We go over there to support those jumpers. And there is Dimitris Atutis, the head coach of Seska Moscow, after he gave his speech to his team. But as we all know, he was the assistant coach for Jean Paul Bradovich from 1999 to 2012. 13 seasons together, and they won five EuroLeague titles. Tonight's two head coaches on the same bench for those 13 years as sharing those five EuroLeague titles. And now we'll hear what the great Joko Obradovic had to say to his Fenerbahce players right before this game. All the season we play to be over here and any one of you make excellent job starting with the kids to help the team to come over here. You show something that is very important. You work very hard and you deserve to play this game. You deserve to play this game. And I want from your side something that I'm sure that you have. Every one of you, you have a lot of character inside of you. And because of this character, we are over here. And I want from your side to go out and to show this that you have inside. Character. Okay. This is the, 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 the key tonight. Let's go. Yeah. 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 And an inspirational pregame talk from that man, the winningest person in European club basketball history, Joko Obradovic, with eight titles to his name. And now in his 15th Final Four in just 24 years of coaching, says, says to his players, you belong here, you've got the character to win this, and to, and to uh, many of them become titleists for the first time. Well, he, he knows, Frank, he has eight of them, so he knows what it takes, and character is a main thing here. You have to have a lot of character to come out here and play. I expect these guys to come out here and play extremely physical from the beginning. Jessica's not a very physical team. They don't like to play physical, so I look for him to come out and really get really get in the Jessica's face right off the bat. Another major factor, Joko Bradovic has played in eight EuroLeague championship games, and he has won all eight. It's only when he hasn't been able to get to the final, out of final four, that he has lost. But when it's come down to this day, title day, Joko Bradovic is 8-0 and zero in the EuroLeague Final Four. There's some other guys on both teams as we look at our referees for tonight's game with Luigi Lamonica of Italy, Robert Lodermoser of Germany, and Damir, Damir Javo of Slovenia. I will see from our insider ref cam throughout the game and throughout the weekend as we've seen the images coming off the jersey cam that one of the referees is wearing and you just got a quick look at it in the pregame uh, festivities and you'll get a look at it throughout tonight's broadcast you can't get closer to the action than the insider ref cam and as we wait to see our starters come on to onto the uh, court to get ready for this Turkish Airlines Early Championship game. Several players are trying to add to their log of uh, Euroleague titles for Fenerbahce. Kostas Lukas and Pedro Antic had two titles each with Olympiakos in 2012 and 13. And Ricky Hickman has won from when he played for Maccabi Tel Aviv in 2014. On the uh, Seska side, we have Kyle Hines with the same two titles that Pedro Antic and Kostas Lucas won with Olympiakos, so old teammates. Uh, going at it while Victor Kriapa and Andre Gordon Savage each have one. So players, but everybody else is playing for their first, and you know they are going to be totally, totally inspired for that possibility tonight. And here you can listen to the anthem of the early I feel devotion as the starters for tonight's game stand on the court with some of the one-team participants from the local 
EuroLeague basketball team, Alba Berlin, one of the great, uh, one of the clubs doing great work all around Europe in the one team corporate social responsibility program of EuroLeague basketball. And it's great to see those participants, those youngsters, stand shoulder to shoulder with the stars right here before the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Championship game, showing how much they belong and they are, deserve their moment in the spotlight as well, representing all the many, many young people around the continent who are getting help through one team. Again, we see the inside a ref cam, and Joe, as we go to tip off, what do you be looking for, Ovi? Well, I, I'm already looking, Frank, at the fact that Bobby Dixon and Udo are not in this game. I don't know what's going on. It's a starting lineup, a different starting lineup for Selfie, but it's something that he's seen through the matchups that he wants to use. Maybe it's a it's a way to get the call on not into the game so quickly, take him out of the game early if possible. And we have tip off in the Turkish Airlines Real League Championship game. It is controlled by Cisco Moscow. Corey Higgins out top, shadowed by Costa Slukas. Ball goes to Nando de Colo, the MVP. Gets into the lane, running one hander on the mark. He picks up where he left off in the semifinal. You can't forget, you gotta forget about stopping him already. He's already on fire right off the bat. Takes it to the basket with a nice little floater. It makes it look easy, as we said, all on Friday and through the season. Fenerbahce gets it inside to Vesely, kicks to Kalinic on the wing. For three, Nikola Kalinic getting Fenerbahce on the board. Oh, you gotta love a championship game that starts like that. Two baskets in a row, beautiful play by both teams. Teska gets it to Nicolo on the wing, working with Kyle Hines on the switch. Gives it inside. Hines fakes, goes inside and off the backboard. Kyle Hines coming to play as well. And there's your key player tonight, if you ask me, on the floor. Kyle Hines is going to cause a lot of damage inside the paint. You see him do more and more things in his career. And a little fake and crawl is one. Here's oh. Dakome oh. fully covered with the shot and the foul. He'll be going to the free throw line. Four for four shooting to start off the Turkish Airlines Euro League Championship game. Dakome coming off the big old school style, squaring up and sticking it right in his face, getting a foul and one. And that brought a uh, majority, let's say, the Nerdbache crowd out of its seat. And as more they get into it, the more they'll be pumping up the players from Fenerbahce, of course. Tatome at the free throw line completes the three-point play. And we have a 6-4 lead for Fenerbahce. Three points each time down the floor for them. But Zeska has not missed either. More on Sevich. Three-pointer up and out and rebounded by Luigi Tatome. First miss of the game right there. It took a little while. Kalinic backing down on Nicolo. Nicolo falls, Kalinic misses, and Corey Higgins comes up with the rebound, so finally each team has a miss. Higgins working on Slutus, backing him in, still going down. Turn around, fade away. Hines got a piece of the rebound and went off the arm of Jan Vesely, giving Ceska Moscow 14 more seconds to score on this possession. Interesting play right there. Corey Higgins trying to post up and play the big man. He's more of a three-point shooter. Shooting 54% this season, but saw something down low. Top three-point shooter percentage-wise in the early. Corey Higgins, Nicolo behind his back, gets it back, goes to Higgins. Nicolo oh. behind his back, Higgins from deep on the mark, Corey Higgins, a great team basketball from Sessica. How smooth is Nicolo with that left-handed behind the back pass? That was so sweet. Higgins knew it was coming. Seven to six, six to seven lead for Sessica. Bogdanovich with the ball on the wing, looking inside. And Nikita Kurbanov gets put. Caught with uh, holding Jan Vesely for the second Look foul this. in this game. Look at him. Look at that pass. Catching the ball off the dribble, his left hand behind the back, looking left and going the other way. <laughs> what court vision. On the mark. This guy's a perfect amazing. time in the Higgins. I need a rest, Frank. <laughs> we got a long game ahead of us, and it started off just the way you would want a championship game to begin. Fenerbahce, Bogdanovich inside, kicks to Kalinic. 
He hit one already. He's trying one again. And it's Bogdanovich with the rebound, putting it right back in where I'll hit the floor. So intelligent by Bogdanovich to not come down with that ball and get stuck in the land of the Giants. Just get it while you're up there. Get that ball in the position and bank it. A little uh -oh. a foul on Kalinich and a little taking offense to that was uh, Nando de Colo. Now we know we're in a championship game, Frank. Now we know we're here. And here we'll see the replay. And this is something. They got their arms tied up. Foul was called. Took a little bow right there from Nicolo. But let me tell you something. This is something that these games are all about. These are statement plays right now. So the MVP taking, taking a little offense at the way he was fouled by Kalinich. And that hey, whistle. When you're MVP, you better expect that. When you're MVP, you better expect that in a championship game. There, no one's going to just let you get to the basket like they did the first time. Well, he gave it back is what he did, and uh, that shows something, too. Here's Zeska inbounding the ball, and in fear of a five-second violation, Corey Higgins heads up play, tosses it off the knee of Slukas and out of bounds, so Zeska can try it again. Got an 8-7 lead for Fenerbahce. Hardly any misses in this game so far. Inbounds to Voron Savage, to Higgins in the corner. Fakes Kalinic. Moron Savage goes up, misses, balls loose into the hands of Bogdanovich, and he goes into transition behind his back. He's got a mind to go into the basket, but gets turned back. Kalinic to Datome on the wing for three. Oh. Nothing but oh. that, Luigi Datome. GG. Both teams are on fire in the Turkish Airlines Jury Championship game. What a great look by Kalinic in the low post, too. Beautiful pass. Setting up Gigi for that easy three-pointer. Higgins fakes it. They get the ball inside to Kyle Hines going against Vesely. Kick out to Voron Savage. He's got a good percentage. He knocks it down as well. Everybody's hitting and nobody's missing so far in this game. Voron Savage is right back at you, Gigi. It's coming right back at you, baby. Nine different scorers in the first less than four minutes of this game. Steal by Decolo. Ahead to Voron Sevic, layup attempt. He was blocked by Kalinic, but he committed the foul beforehand, so that will put. Intelligent play here by Piccolo. You're going to see him use the bounce pass here so effectively to keep that ball away from the defender and get Voron Sevic to the basket and foul. I do believe Kalinic actually got the ball, but he climbed the back of Voron Sevic yeah. with, his, with his knee, and that's where the foul was called. And it puts Andre Voron Sevic. On the free I'm, watching, throw line. I'm watching the fender about to bench. Nudo is way back in the corner, getting warmed up a little bit. Now Zelko is looking for him. He just found him right next to the bench. He's coming in the game. He's not gonna be out here for too long. He's not gonna be out of this game for too long. I see him coming in right now. First free throw goes down, and Andre Von Savage ties it up with a chance to put Seska back ahead. They've been going back and forth on the scoreboard. And he touched just that. That's Kalinich's second foul also that we just saw on that, on that fast break. Another reason why the big man is coming in. So now you got what we've been talking about all weekend. Kind of a theme all weekend. Vesely and Udo playing together in this game. They've done it so well. They did it great in the first game. We'll see what they do here in the finals. Two fouls on Kalinich. Brings in Udo for the twin tower effect for Fenerbahce. Remember Udo broke the EuroLeague record for total blocks this season. But he's done more than that as well throughout the year. Bogdanovich inside to Udo gets sandwiched, goes out to Datomi with the pass, but it's kicked out of bounds. And Fenerbahce will get another try. Great help right there by Warren Savage getting Udo cutting down the middle. That's where Udo is so effective, coming off that pick and roll, cutting down the middle. He likes to get the ball and turn around and shoot, but Warren Savage gave him no space that time to shoot that. Eight for 13 shooting so far between the two teams in this game. Bogdanovich going to try his hand off the front of the rim into the hands of Milos Tedosic, who's now in for Seska Moscow. Second leading scorer in the early this season after his teammate. Here's Tedosic oh. off the mark oh. and in the basket. <laughs> and he doesn't take long to get warmed up, let me tell you. He's got Seska up four, and he just broke the EuroLeague record for three-pointers in the season. That's his 75th. Nobody's ever hit more in one EuroLeague season. Somebody must, somebody must have told him that that record was there. He's like, I want to get rid of that right away. 
Ed Osherton is seventh Final Four without having uh, won one yet, so you know he's got to be one of the most motivated guys out there. But I think they're all just the same in motivation level. He wants this thing. There's no doubt about it. He's had a couple, couple near misses, but he's here now. To the rim was Lucas on the miss. Warren Sevich with the rebound. Nicolo in transition takes Lucas down low. Turns around. Off the back of the rim into the hands of Lucas. He's on the run and Decolo stops the transition with a foul. I, I think that's exactly what Lucas in the game for here in the beginning. Is to kind of hold Decolo down a little bit. Decolo's coming out of the game right now. Higgins coming in to take his place. It's a chance for Fenerbahce to maybe jump in a little bit, get more aggressive offensively, take advantage of his time with Decolo's on the bench. It's 11-15. Nicolo on the bench. Crimson in. Bogdanovich with the ball. Still dribbling. Gets it back from Vesely. Jason Hines goes to Slukas for three. Off the front of the rim. Hines corrals the rebound. And Bogdanovich trying to block his way gets called for the foul. But what a first five minutes of the championship game, Joe. I'm glad someone called a timeout. I was getting tired. Timeout on the floor at Mercedes Benz Arena in Berlin, Germany. And a wild and fascinating start to the Turkish Airlines Euro League championship game. It's 11 to 15 in favor of Sesaka Moscow as we take a break in the action. Insider ref cam as you see how uh, the refs were greeted by the players and coaches right before the start of this Turkish Airlines Euro League Championship game and some of the early action as well. When we come back for the first time out, Joe, we have an 11 15 lead for Seska Matel. They put on a little surge here, but it's been very close the entire way. Yeah, one of the, one of the most interesting things I've seen so far is. It's the way Cheska's defending the pick and roll up top. I knew though when he cuts to the basket, it's it's very Zelko like. Zelko used to do this himself, and he still does it occasionally. When the big man cuts down the middle, he brings the four of the five men from the other side to stop that penetration in the middle. So automatically, Judas is going to try to take away that little jump shot from the foul line. And Cheska really taking care of the ball with zero turnovers so far in this game. Higgins out top for Sesaka gets it to Teodosic. Tries to go between the defenders. Uh, let's see if the foul is called on Vesely or Bobby Dixon, who's now in the game for Fenerbahce. And it's Bobby Dixon crowding Teodos as, as he tried to split the defenders. This guy inbounds with a four point lead. Teodos on the run. The ball goes off his knee and out of bounds on a good defense by Jan Vesely. So that's a turnover for Tuska Moscow. Yeah, the defensive player by Vesely, other than getting his hand in the way, was the fact that he used his body and he just he just came down the lane and cut that lane off to to, to Diodosic to get to the basket. Couldn't turn that corner on him because of the defensive position. Live uh, shot from our refs cam. The conversation between the referee and Joko Bradovic. His team, Fenerbahce, inbounds the ball. Bobby Dixon, of course, is a marksman from the arc. They're going to watch out for him. Vesely hands off to Bogdanovich. Gets it back from Udo. Six on the shot clock. He's going to have to do something. Bogdanovich will fire from deep off the front of the rim, but Luigi Datome seems to have the rebound, and he does and gets fouled by Andre Voronsevich. Both the first teams foul on on Goran Cevic. Both teams get a little bit more physical defensively as we started the first couple minutes. And both 
will be shooting in the bonus with the next with the next fouls that are committed with a little under four minutes left in the first quarter. Donovich inbounds to Bobby Dixon on the switch. Kyle Hines with him, but they switch back. Bogdanovich to Vesely. Baseline, one hander. Nice little shot from John Vesely. And I was just about to add that Vesely hasn't touched the ball offensively yet. That's a nice little play for Vesely. Get into it. They really need him. First shot of the first basket of the night by John Vesely. Fritzen comes off the screen on the roll, kicks out to Victor Kriapa just in the game. Ball swings to Teodosic from deep off the mark. Rebound fought for and picked up by Vesely. Bobby Dixon inside to Epe Udo. Gets it to Datome. One stop. Popped by Datome oh in. Fast as you can shoot it. Gigi wants the ball tonight. He wants it. He's looking for the ball. As soon as he gets it, his first thought is to the basket every time. Leading scorer so far with eight points. Gigi Datome has it all tied up. Higgins, he'll chop and pop for three. On the mark, you answering can't. back, Corey you Higgins. You can't do that if you're Zelko Radovic and Fenerbahce. You cannot let Higgins come off of that pick and have that wide of an open look at the basket. He's a 54% shooter. We've said it over and over again. Yeah, time to think about it, too. Too much time. Bogdanovic gets in the lane, dribbles out. Looking for Udo, has him. Victor Kriapa, former best defender trophy winner down there. Udo goes over with the hook and off the front of the rim, so good job by Kriapa. Udo's getting a lot of looks inside. He's getting a big man like Kriapa. He's getting a little man like Kyle Hines. Hines makes it difficult for a big man to make their moves because of his low center of gravity. Makes it real tough. And then we got Kanapa with his length and his ability to, to, to hold people away from the basket. Makes it a little bit more tougher for Udo. Milos Tedos is drawing a foul on Bobby Dixon. That goes down as the second foul on Dixon. He stays in the ball game while Ricky Hickman comes in to replace. Looks like Bogdan Bogdanovic takes his first seed of this game. And Milos Teodosic at the free throw line makes the first of two. So they, they took a little shot from Fenerbahce, but they, they're going to go back into a four point or five point yeah, lead right away. They're coming right back, and now Zelko's looking for another lineup change here, going with two point guards to see how that's going to work for him. And Teodosic does indeed up the difference to five points. Which has been matching the high so far for Siska. They've had a couple good runs. Vesely hands off to Ricky Hickman, former Euroleague champion. Dixon shadowed by Higgins. He'll pop it from deep. Bobby Dixon off the mark into the hands of Milos Teodosic. Teodosic oh. still has it, goes to Hines, stutter Got steps. Got him for a travel right there. Stutter steps, it gets called for a <laughs> traveling violation. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Hickman took a shot by Hines. What a pick that was at the fast break. We're going to see it right here. Look at this pick. Hick Hickman looks and says, somebody tell me that the pick is there. Please, especially when it's Kyle Hines. A brick wall pick. Oh. You know? His guards love playing with him because the people just bounce off him, clear out of the way. Here's Dixon to Hickman. Looking for Vesely, cut pulls it back out, goes to Datome. It's Vesely with Ted Osic on him, mismatch. Another one-hander. This one misses, but Udo rips the rebound. Hickman inside, running one-hander by him. Gets and fouled one, and puts and it one. down. Ricky Hickman coming in and getting a big basket for Fenerbahce. Nice play getting to the basket there, but let me tell you something. He do this is doing a really good job. We see so many times of Vesely cutting down the middle or Udo cutting down the middle and getting that little layup. And they are not giving that play up. They're not going to give up that easy basket. Man. They're going to make those both big men work for their baskets. But Hickman makes a beautiful player. Catch the foul, just lays it in pretty. And let's remember, this was a big game player just two Huge. years ago, Ricky Hickman, all through the playoffs and into the uh, into the title game and winning that for, with Maccabi Tel Aviv. Completes a three-point play. It's a two-point ball game, 18 to 20. Hines looking for Teodosic. Can't get it to him. Good D by Dixon. Hines 
against Vesely. Called for a second traveling violation in a row as Vesely was there with him step for step. Again, Vesely doing the same thing on that defensive play. Being able to slide his feet horizontally, we're going to see if he's going to cut all the way down to the baseline and try to shut that off to make sure that he's not able to turn the corner with his shoulder. And it's hard to do that with someone like Kyle Hines who's that big. There you get a look at the great jump ball, Bradovich. I talked to him all the time about that red face. About when he screams, he's that red face, but he says he's in better shape these days. Dixon with the ball on the wing. For Fenerbahce, a chance to tie or go ahead. Hickman. Ball knocked away by Kriapa on the second try. He gets called for a foul. He's so long, Kriapa. His length, he's taking the ball away from the point guards out there. Probably tried one too many times right there, got called for the foul. Hickman's going to go to the line for two. There were 47 seconds left. Two for the Hickman, as we're saying, was a huge protagonist on the team that won the early title two years ago. He was injured last year when Fenerbahce went to the Final Four, didn't get to play, came back mid early in the season this year, and has not had a huge role. But he, like I said, he knows big games, and he's certainly come out and given them a lift right it's now. In, it's interesting because in that game, Tyrese Rice is the guy that everybody talks about because he took over that game in the overtime. But it was Hickman that got him there. Rice was a pivotal part. I, I even think he got the MVP of that game, if I'm not mistaken. But Hickman was a huge part of that game. In the game for Fenerbahce now is Nelly Maimatolu, known as a three-point marksman himself. Fritzen with the ball, shadowed by Natome, almost loses it, but gets it to Victor Kriapa. Goes all the way in, misses, but Pavel Korobkov comes up with the rebound, and he gives it back to Kriapa for, for a go-ahead shot. 23 seconds left in the first quarter, so two... Quick substitutions here at the end. Pavel Korobkov with the big offensive rebound. As Seska ahead with 13 seconds left. Let's see if Fenerbahce can tie or go ahead. Hickman out top. He's had the last five points for his team. Five on the shot clock. Lost the handle. He's going to have to shoot it. Gets inside. Tries to drive. Blocked by Kriapa. So nothing doing for Ricky Hickman after he scored five points in a row. And Kriapa there with the defense. To preserve a 20 to 22 lead, Siska Moscow over Fenerbahce Istanbul at the end of 10 minutes here in the Turkish Airlines Yearly Championship game. We have a top scorer is Luigi Datome. Come back and join us for the second quarter. Turkish Airlines, Doge Group, Spalding, Intersport. And Turkey Home, official global sponsors of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. Coming back for second quarter action in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Championship game, and it's been very even throughout. A couple five-point leads by Fener by Seska, but Fenerbahce made up in a hurry, and Seska had the last last word of the first quarter with a uh, two-point lead. Yeah, they took a two-point lead, but it's su such a great contest here, such a battle between two teams that are really playing physical right now they're playing a great game we saw them we saw the offenses explosion there in the first minute and a half or two minutes of the game then they settled back in the game a little bit became a little bit more of a defensive battle now i feel like both teams are here now they they've arrived they realize they're in the final they're comfortable with where they're at and they're ready to go this game is only going to be better as we go we've already got nine i believe scorers in this game in the first 10 minutes, and there's not many more, not many more guys than that got in the game. So uh, everybody's come to play, and uh, not much of a difference. Just the two late turnovers by Kyle Hines on the traveling calls gave it a little more opportunity to Fenerbahce, and they took it to tie it up. But now they're down by two. Otherwise, it's uh, this guy's three-point shooting, four for seven in uh, in that first quarter, as compared to two for seven for. And uh, and that would be the difference uh, that we're seeing right now. Yeah, we talk about rotations all the time and team rotations. Looks like Zelko might be trying to cut his rotation a little bit. He's got uh, Vesely and Detomi both played 10 minutes in that first quarter, and they're still in the game right now, starting the second. It'll be Hickman for Fenerbahce to get the second quarter underway. Looking inside the Vesely. 
Has to go out top to let Udo throw it in. Leslie backs down, ball's loose, and it's Pavel Korobkov coming up with the play for Seska. As a setup play for Besley, trying to get him into the game as quick as he can here in the second quarter. Trying to get him the ball, let him move in the low post, but unfortunately he loses it in the middle. Hickman almost steals it from Dekolo, who's back on the court. He stops and pops. He gets it tipped by Epe Udo. Oh, Udo. I think everybody underestimates the length of his arm. It's amazing how long this guy is. You're going to watch Dekolo here go to the basket. Loves to pull that pull up and get a little stop off and drop, but Udo's like, uh uh. He's like, go, go, gadgets and arms. I don't know if anybody knows what that means anymore, but that's old school, Frank. Coming on the court, Pedro Antic for Fenerbahce Istanbul. He's a two time champion. He knows what the big stage is all about. Meli Maimatolu is still in there along with Datomi Udo and Hickman for Fenerbahce. Antic is a big man, but he's a guy that's real effective from the perimeter. He loves to shoot. There you see him go straight the to the corner yep. waiting for the ball. He loves those corners. He builds a little house over there, sets up and tries to drill that three of his. Interior pass puts Datomi on Fritz and it reaches in and gets called for the foul. Datomi has one thing in mind today, Frank. He's looking at the basket. I haven't seen him touch the ball and look for anybody else. He's like, hey, man, I'm a big time player. This is a big time game. Give me the rock. Two for two on two pointers, one for one from downtown, and one for one at the free throw line. Makes him the leading scorer in this game. Gigi Datome with eight points. Trying to inbound, gets it to Udo. Gets it back. Datome backing down on Fridzen. Crowded by three defenders, gets the pass away. <laughs> But put, first there was a foul. He, he needed three guys on him to think about passing at that time, and he's still going to shoot it. I love the way this guy's playing right now. Look at him. He's got one, two. Here comes the other guy in the baseline. All of them, and he still wanted to shoot that ball. I think I think they uh, fouled him on his on his little yeah. hair uh, yeah. button there. I, if I'm not mistaken, he got he got his hair pulled on the foul because he's got it up in a bunch behind his head. Next time it'll be the beard, right? <laughs> exactly. Pickman will inbounds with 14 on the shot clock for Fenerbahce. Both teams having a tough time inbounding the ball. I saw Cheska have a tough time before in, in their side of the court. And right now Fenerbahce in the last two times have a tough time getting the ball in. Kordbanov back in the game for Sesaka to replace Fritzen. Probably to, to counter that post-up defensive uh, uh, Situation that uh, says uh, Fenerbahce was forcing with the Tommy. They bring Kurbanov. That Tommy gets the ball to Dixon. Trying to go around Teodosis. Gives it to Maimatolu. He's a sniper in and out by Meli Maimatolu. I almost got on my seat for that shot right there. Fade away three near the bench. Always. Gets the crowd off their feet, but not that time for Meli Maimatolu. Ted Osic to Kurvanov gets fouled on the shot, so he'll go to the free throw line. Squeezing the pass through was Ted Osic. Udo with cat like reaction. Look at him come, boom, gets there, and as soon as he gets back, gets up again, trying to block that shot. So still, we have this after the, the, the fast start shooting in the first quarter. In a minute and a half here in the second quarter, if Korbanov can hit a free throw, that would be the first points of this uh, second quarter. And he does just that to lengthen the Seska Moscow lead. Game plans are coming into play now. Defensive game plans are coming in. All the fun in the beginning of the first two minutes now settled down in a little bit more of a defensive type game. Which, if you ask me, benefits more to the style of play of Fenerbahce. Kurbanov knocks them both down, 88% free throw shooter. And they're six for six as a team. Nobody's missed a free throw tonight. Udo out top for Fenerbahce. Drives on Kurban. Kurovkov, the ball swings to Bobby Dixon for three. Fenerbahce staying right on Siska's heels. 
You gotta watch out for point guards in these final players in these championship games, Frank. Bobby Dixon's capable of taking over games. We've seen guards all the oh Taya goes it through the defense all alone and hits it. Drop oh. shot over the best shot blocker in your league history. What were they just saying about guards? You gotta watch them. They're, they're taking over these final fours. Udo with the ball out top to Bogdanovich, who's back in the game. Goes cross court to Antic. He'll pump that. And Victor Kriapa was there. Got a piece of the ball, but got a piece of Pedro Antic's arm. Figured out by here makes a great move and not biting on that fake. He knows Anders likes to throw that fake first. Doesn't bite on it, but gets a little piece of that arm. Puts Anders on the line for the three free throws. Chance to tie it up for Pedro Antic. He's been hitting 73% of his free throws coming into this final four. Liking, I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Theodosis today. He's looking like a leader out there. He just went up to Cordova, settled him down a little bit, came up to DiColo just now here in front of us, and kind of gave him a high five and says, hey, DiColo's only got two points right now, but he'll keep adding the game. Don't worry about it. Theodosis is looking like a leader right now down the floor. Pedro Antich makes two out of his, well, two out of his three. He's got another one to go. Nobody's missed a free throw in this game. Both teams six for six. That's also a sign of uh, teams being uh, ready for the championship game. Concentration, and I'll tell you what, foul shots win and lose game. We saw that with Kahala, with Lamarau Luchka in the semifinal game. Three, three missed free throws in the game was really costly for them. That's why they're not here in this, in this championship game. You gotta make your free throws in this, especially in big games like this. And Anchich ties it up. We got 26-26 early in the second quarter. Oran Savage back in for Sesaka and Nikola Kalinic back in for Fenerbahce. Dan Osic to Nikolo. Oran Savage for three off the back of the rim. Can't get to the rebound. It's snared by Udo. And at the other end, an offensive foul called on Pedro Antic. As Dick trying to get position as Dekolo. We'll see the replay here. And looks like Dekolo was stationary when Pedro Antic came along. And the big man's always going to get that foul called on him. Let me tell you. Poor, the poor big man, right? Yeah. He's always going to get that foul called on him. Spoken like a true big man. Anyway, it's Sesc got ball on the turnover. Dekolo. Crowds inside, oh. passes out to Voron Savage for three, misses again. Voron Savage is a very good uh, three point shooter over 45% this season, and a lot of them, but not those last two. Dixon gets it to Udo, driving on Kurokov, spins and puts up the hook shot, and we'll go to the free throw line on a, on a foul by Pavel Kurokov. Hey, He's been kid. out there more. I'm not sure if he played at all in the semifinal. He's out there a lot tonight. Obviously, there's bigger men on Fenerbahce. And, uh, and he's one of the guys that has to help. So they are his head coach, Dimitris Atutis, giving them some encouragement. This game up played well. Played well. They are making Udo's life miserable in the plane. He is not getting anything easy at all. Even on that last move, he got bumped. They're playing real physical with him. Nice little move by him. Missed the jump hook, but got the foul call. He gets the foul line. He'd love to see one go in here from the foul line. Doesn't get the first one, first, but he needs to get back into this game. First miss of either night. And speaking of somebody who needs to get back into the game, or at least he had the first basket, now been on the floor for nine minutes is the MVP. Nando de Colo still sitting on those two points. He had two more misses since since his opening basket in this game. Udo makes the second free throw. That gives Fenerbahce back the lead. They've had a tough time getting him in, in front on the scoreboard. Nikolo guarded by Bogdanovic, who reaches in and gets called for the foul. That's Bogdan's second foul also. We have two fouls given, on Kalinic, two fouls on Dixon, and two fouls on on Bogdanovic. So a little of the backcourt aggressive defense by Fenerbahce is I love, some fouls. I love how aware these players are. As soon as Bogdanovic got that second ball, he looked over the bench to get the thumbs up, said, I'm fine, do not take me out. 
Ted Osich in the corner of the deck of love fakes and a oh. runner puts it down from the baseline. Makes it look easy. All of a sudden he's got nobody around him and everybody's watching him. He's got so many ways to score with a one one step, one foot runner right there and the, and the little little hoop. I don't even know what I don't even know what you call that shot, but he's got so many ways, so many things in his arsenal to score. Udo free goes to the corner, swings to Dixon, gets inside, tries to go back to Udo. He gets it for the hook shot off the backboard, misses. And Kyle Hines back in for Seska. Gets that rebound. Ted Osage in transition, looking for somebody. Oh. Five oh. for Savage. What a pass. Oh. A two hand wraparound pass to Andre Voron Savage for the slam. And you would, you just have to know that Miller Ted Osage in transition is one of the best passers I've ever seen on a basketball court. Look at this pass. Not even textbook because what you don't want to do on a pass like this is jump and come off the floor and Tia Dosa says, I'm not even concerned about it. I'm going to go up in the air. Look at this. He draws two men like he's going to shoot the ball. Gives a beautiful bounce pass. And the key to that bounce pass, Frank, was the velocity on it because it didn't give it a chance to Udo to get over there and make that rotation. Timeout on the floor after that spectacular play by Milos Tedosa and Andre Moran Savage, 27-30. See the uh, insider ref cam once again, and conversation between the players and the refs. Some of the uh, second quarter action or early game action, right from the jersey cam. <laughs> There's the call. <laughs> There's the traveling call, right from the jersey cam. I thought the ref was doing a little dance right there. Between quarters, we'll see if he's got the same moves, but that was just a traveling call, and. Uh, Never saw that before from the uh, chest of a referee because he's wearing a camera tonight. Back for middle of the second quarter action. Venerbahce down three with the ball. Dixon out top. Dixon will pump it from way downtown. Off the mark. Dicolo with the rebound. Ahead to Kordobanov. For the oh! slam. Nikita Kordobanov making a move and slamming it down. He saw Kalinich coming from behind. He said, there's no way you're getting this one, my man. I'm throwing this thing down. Goes up, skies over eight. Over Bobby Dixon, just throws it down. Bogdanovich well, inside the pedal Antich, backing down on Kordobanov, and he draws the foul. It will be before the shot, I believe, is what the referee indicated. Better get those two free throws anyways. Oh, baby, look at that on the replay. Kordobanov. You're right, and we've seen Kalinich make blocks like that. He's oh, totally going for that block. You know as a player, you see Kalinich coming. It doesn't look like he sees him, but he can see him. What a great play right there. Again, one of the one of the guys we haven't had a chance to mention is, is Kurpanov, but is one of the many who could really affect this game because Kurpanov has started half the time this season for Cisco. He's Maybe lesser known than some of his teammates, but he's out there a lot because of uh, his effectiveness on both ends of the floor. Yeah, he's, he's de he defensively, he's a leader in his team. He's so strong on the defensive end, but he's also very effective in offensive, and especially as we saw getting on the break, getting easy baskets on the fast break. It was a five point lead for Seska. Antic on that foul gets to the line and makes both, cuts it to three. Nobody's led by more than five in this ball game. 15 minutes through the first half. Teodosic out top. Lucas back in the game. Teodosic gets it to Hines. Oh. Swings all the way to Teodosic. Oh. Four three. Oh. Great ball movement oh. by Seska Moscow. We talked about teamwork and ball movement. That's exactly what that was. That was beautiful. That's unselfish basketball right there. And now they do have the biggest lead of the game. Six points. Bogdanovich. To Antic inside to Udo. Decolo tries to steal it, gets it to Slukas in the lane, drop to Kalinitz. There's Decolo for that disruption. Comes up with the ball this time. Voran Savage ahead to Hines, but a little too far, and 
Kalinic gets it back for Fenerbahce. Great defensive transition right about Fenerbahce. Down six, you do not want to give up an easy basket on a fast break. Lob into Udo. Crosses over, gets inside, kicks out to Antic for three. Off the front of the rim. And we saw some of uh, Fenerbahce's three-point struggles uh, in the semifinal when they almost let that game get away from them. That makes it three for 11 tonight on three-pointers for Fenerbahce. Whereas Seska Moscow, if I'm not mistaken, had one of the best three-point percentages in EuroLeague history this season. Uh, they were number one in the EuroLeague this season. And, uh, three-point percentage, like I said before, you know, in the, in the other day, they have four guys, Nicolò, Teodosic, Warren Savage, and Higgins, who averaged 47% from three points. The three of the four of them averaging 47%. Those are incredible numbers for the three-point line. Higgins, 54, Warren Savage, 46, Teodosic, 42, and Nicolò, 46. Here we're seeing some of the seriously physical action we've seen not even uh, in the first uh, part of the of this half, bodies hitting the floor and lots of uh, heavy hits. What it's all about, man. Nothing for free out here. That's what, it's one of the staples of, uh, of, of the Turkish Airlines. It's a very, very physical game. And it's very difficult to uh, score easily when defenders are uh, putting their body on you, like you see up and down the court in this competition. Yeah, we've seen it for years, especially with teams like Olympiacos who love to do that. They love to play that type of physical basketball game. They're pretty much branded as that type of team. And it's amazing throughout the years as they change coaches and change personnel, change owners, whatever, they always seem to keep that same attitude. And it looks like Fenerbahce is trying to play that way also, but Cheska's right there. I'm very surprised at the well, physicality. It's contagious when you win back-to-back -back titles well, like what yeah, did exactly. for a couple of years. Exactly. And went to another final as well, so. Corey Higgins back in the game for Cheska. He uh, keeps the dribble alive, gets it to Teodosic. He goes to the oh. low, inside the highs, blocked, or no, fouled by Kalinic. A great reaction by Kalin. It's great pass by Teodosic, of course. Boy, but let me tell you something. Look at this dish. Look at this dish. I mean, there's not much room there. He's threading needles right there to get that ball into there. I, I, I continue to say it. He's so far ahead of everybody else on the court. This pass is the beautiful pass. I thought Hines was going to go up and dunk on somebody right there. I think he was kind of receiving halfway behind him. He might have been surprised by the pass. I've talked to Ted Osage's teammates over the years, and they say, you really have to adjust because you have to be ready at any moment. He sees passes that you don't even see as a receiver until it's developed, and you got to be basically, as soon as you turn, you got to be looking for a pass from him. Some guys get hit in the, in the back with well, passes before I, they realize what's going on. Frank, I had that experience playing with the great Arvita Simonis in Madrid, where when I started practicing with him, he hit me in the back of the head twice with passes, and I'm like, I like this guy. He keep it in the head. I'm going to eventually see him. Seska has taken control of the scoreboard. Eight-point lead with about 3.30 left to play in the first half. Datome cross court to Slukas, but a foul inside. Well, they had Nicolo fighting with Udo down there, down low. Nicolo picks up his second foul. Still got 3.30 left. Going to be interesting to see what he do this does here the last 3.30. Do you pull him out, protect him from that third foul or not? But... I think Fenner should have gotten that ball to Udo a little bit quicker if they could have, but they did pick up the foul on Nicolò. And Udo goes to the free throw line. Well, Udo low struggle. He's, Udo's struggling tonight. He really needs to get into this game a little bit offensively for his team. He's not a bad free throw shooter, 77% this season. Here's the switch to Tommy just couldn't get in the ball there. And that one rattles around and goes in for Epe Udo. That cried its way in right there. <laughs> he was happy to see that one go in. The 30 to 37 scoreboard in, in favor of Sissaka. And, and we haven't seen Vessel in a while either in this game. He played those first 10, 11 minutes, and he just got back into the game now. So let's see if he can come off the bench in the last three minutes and see what he can do. Corey Higgins draws two defenders, goes to Ted Osage. The ball just ping pongs to uh, take a low uh, for a three pointer. Sissaka Moscow is on game so far in this. Turkish Airlines Junior League Championship game, biggest lead, 10 points. These are just a couple beautiful looking offensive plays, teamwork. They're playing offensive foul, mostly. 
Vesely called for hook in on the offensive foul. That's his first, but an inopportune turnover. You see, first the guy's elbow up, and then the referee saw the hand around on Draymond and Savage and called. <laughs> Look at the teamwork, though, by chess guys. Just how, do you, how do you defend that when you a ball ping pongs to so quickly to three players and four players? It's one of my biggest things in basketball these days. Is you have to be able to pass the ball quickly because defenses are so quick, especially off the dribble. Higgins loose oh. for the slam. Oh. Corey Higgins taking advantage of a defensive breakdown. And Zeska Moscow roaring ahead on the scoreboard by 12 points now with 2.50 left in the first half. And Higgins a turns big the move by Zeska. Turns everybody's involved. Turns the corner on the Tommy right here and sees no help. Collins has broken as back to the ball. Chasing his man, not seeing the help. Higgins just goes to the hoop and says, you know what? I'm throwing this one down. There's no way you're getting this one on me. One of the best, let me see, I think it's the best shot blocking team in the early this season was Fenerbahce Istanbul, but they have a zero blocks right now against Sesaka in this first half. They average more than four a game, and I think you're gonna have to see them stopping somebody at the rim. Here's Nicola Lowe's amazing, amazing first uh, game of this final four in the semifinal on Friday and here we see some of his shots tonight but in that semifinal on, on Friday never in a do or die game at the final four if anybody scored 30 points before only in the third place game which doesn't get you anywhere uh, he, he, he puts on a show but he does it so quietly sometimes it's just it's so smooth because it's not a selfish way of him scoring 30 points. A lot of people go out and take a lot of shots to get to that 30 point mark. But he does it so selfish, unselfishly, I should say. He gives the ball up, gets other people involved, and scores when he knows that he's got the advantage. Ted Osic is the leading scorer in this game with 10 points in his 13 minutes on the floor. Corey Higgins behind him for Seska with eight. Warren Savage and Dickolo seven, just the kind of balance you want. And Luigi Datome who had eight quick points in uh, the first quarter, still stuck on those eight Wild. points, and nobody higher than him for Venerbahce. And 30 points with 2.50 left in the second quarter, also a testimony to Cesca's defense. They're really playing great defense. I haven't seen Cesca play this great a defense all season long. Speaking of defenders, Aaron Jackson in the ball game. He's a defensive specialist for Cesca. He gets called right away for grabbing John Vesely on the switch so he gets a foul that will put Vesely on the free throw line. Not his favorite place either Jan Vesely under 50 percent this is right around 49. It's not one of it not one of his specialties that's for sure going to the line. It's a little quick on the line all the time steps in a little bit too quick. There's probably a bunch of things he could work on but it's always been Achilles heel for him. And there's the evidence right there. First one misses, second one doesn't touch the rim. I was going to say something about that. When the first one goes long, usually the second one is a little bit short. I just didn't expect it to be that short. He's got to get himself in the game. They really need these two big men. Vessel and Udo are so important to this team because everybody revolves around their interior play. They need to get into this game somehow or another. Not only that, before the game, there was you know, much talk about Zinabachi having an advantage in the front court while Seska may have had it in the back court. But right now, Seska's doing it in all over the court. Higgins tries to go again. This time, Slukas bumps into him and gets called for the foul. Yeah, you can't complain too much about that. That's a pretty good call here by the referee. Slukas goes in, goes in with that left hand. What he should be doing is going in with the right hand. As soon as you use that left hand, you cross the body, you make any type of contact. It's almost an automatic call by a referee. Even if you get a clean steal at it, you're still making a lot of contact with your, with your opposite shoulder. Great first step by Corey Higgins after last time he ended up with a dunk. This time he goes to the free throw line. And he hits it, make Siska nine for nine from the free throw line so far in this game. Jessica's averaging 90 points, almost 91 points a game in this EuroLeague season. And they're right there on that number, if not more, depending on how these last 228 of this first half goal. But man, they are they look good on both ends of the court right now. Well, Danovich fakes, gets turned back along the baseline by Higgins. 
And we get an intentional foul called on Tesla's Dimitri Kuligin, who just came in the game and doesn't play very often. So some sort of tactical move here by. Well, not the smart. You see, you can't wrap the guy up like that. And even though Vesely's not a great free throw shooter, it gonna, still creates a potential of a five point possession. Well, for I, I got a thing with it. It almost, like, it almost looked like a little bit of a hack a shack thing right there. Knowing that Vesely's not shooting well on the foul line, it's okay. Maybe you want to send the guy in that's not playing that much to follow him. So he goes to the foul line invisible. What you don't want to do is get the intentional foul call so that you're giving the ball back to the team, to Fenerbahce. But I mean, are they trying to hack a shot? I think that's my biggest question right here. He's now 0 for 5 at the free throw line. I mean, it works. You get the ball back quick. It, if, it, it, yeah. But I mean, not, if, not, not if you make it intentional and they get uh, there's a lot not of, only the shots, but the possession. There's teams that do that sometimes, but you just can't give up that intentional foul and give up the possession. Tactical move, basically, hey. by Dimitri Satoudis, the assistant head coach. Got to make people make their foul shots. If they can't make their foul shots in big games, then you got to put them on the line as much as you can. Hooligan stays in. Now he's guarding Nudo. Ball swings to Bogdanovich for three. Misses. And Voron Savage comes up with a rebound. Three for 12 now from downtown for Fenerbahce. Hard to, hard to come back from this kind of lead with that kind of shooting. Here goes Higgins again. He goes to Hines. Finishes at the rim. It's a 16 point lead. Jason Kyle Moscow is trying to take control of this game before halftime. They have control, but trying to take it in to halftime. With a huge statement. Way too much space for, for Jessica to operate. There's so much room. They're coming off picks and seeing nothing but open floor. There's nobody helping on defense. Udo to Kooligan. Udo against Kooligan to Datome to Dixon. He's got to shoot up a, a late shot. Great defense by Sesaka and the 24 second violation. Boy, Jessica's bench, you're watching her bench. They're more excited about their defense than they are about their offense, and that's not normal. Let me tell you something. They are playing some great defense. 30 points in this Fenerbahce team in the first half. We just saw we just saw Kooligan, Dimitri Kooligan, come up court and play for, he's a, he's a little under two meters and challenge the two, the two uh, big men for for Fenerbahce and do two or three defenses and get away clean. No points for them. Big tactical move. Tudis is on his game. Let me tell you something. He's I, I love that it. is a surprise. That was a surprise. I love what he's doing defensively. He did it the other day. He did it the other day also against Locomotive. A lot of changes. A little bit of a zone matchup. And it looks great. I mean, and, and it, obviously it's working. 30 points here. Only 10 points in the second quarter for Fred Avanci. And obviously, to go back to one of the uh, the main themes of this game was is the coaching relationship between Dimitri Satoudis of Moscow and Novak Bradovich. I mean, they both referred to each other as big brother, little brother, because they were together by 13 years. And uh, we see some of the lobs from the semifinal between. Uh, his teammates and Jan Vesely. We haven't seen any of that tonight, don't we? And we have not seen any of that tonight. We see frustration on the face of Jan Vesely, who has just two points in almost 13 minutes on the floor. Does two re rebounds as well. Player who can dominate, but they have to create the situations a little bit for him. You can't get frustrated. To me, Vesely is a leader of this team. We see him do so many things on the bench with his teammates. We see him pump up the crowd after dunks. We see him get into the crowd when they need a big defensive play. He's the leader of this team. You can't let the rest of the team see him getting upset with whatever, with himself or with his teammates or whatever. He has to stay focused in this game. He's going to be real important to this team in the second half. Keep your focus. Keep playing basketball. It'll come back to you. It's Ted Osage, Hines, Jackson, Higgins, and Voron Savage on the floor for Seska trying to close out of fantastic second quarter for them. Hines will take the ball across half court. He gets loose inside but kicks out the board on Savage who saves the pass. Nine on the shot clock driving on Antic spins on him and goes off the backboard. Andre Vaughn on Savage came to play. He's up to nine points. The, the individual man to man defense of Fenerbahce is, letter, is letting them down tonight. Every time they get a one on one matchup, they're taking advantage of it. 10 to 26 for Seska so far in this 
Second quarter, Bogdanovich misses. Ted Osich comes up the rebound. This is a, this is the kind of blast that can last it, uh, because now Fenerbahce has to make up so many points in the second half. 34 seconds left in this one. Ted Osich trying to throw the knife in. I'm sure right now. Seven on the shot clock. Backdoor to Aaron Jackson. What a pass. What a cut. And what a lead. 20 points for Sesaka Moscow. 16 seconds on the clock here in the second quarter. This is just an exhibition on both sides of the floor in now Francesca. Bobby Dixon gets it to Bogdanovich from way downtown. That miss is too deep. Warren Savage doesn't get. Well, I was waiting to see if it went in. I'm not sure if he got it off. That would have been the icing on the cake, but they don't need the icing on the cake, says Moscow. They have just ripped off an incredible second quarter. Wow. It was 20-22 in favor of Seska after one. So it's been 20 to 20, 20 to 38. I'm sorry. 10 to 28 in the second quarter for Seska Moscow. And you don't see those kind of breaks in these kind of games. We're going to talk to a couple of protagonists, starting with Luigi Datome of Fenerbahce. Turkish Airlines, seven days. Nisinenok.com, Denny's Bank, Siesta, Tadim, Lenovo, Burger King, and Seg. Official global sponsors in association with the Turkish Airlines Euro League. If you're not going to want to blow it, these first three minutes are important. They don't want to have a letdown. They want to continue that momentum they have. And if you're Fenerbahce, you need to go after it. This is it. This is your last 20 minutes. You need to go all out. They saw Seska President Andre Batutin pacing at halftime. He's not thinking anything's over, that's for sure. Just like his head coach Dimitris Atutis assured, told his players, Higgins will start the first offense for Sisaka. And Ted Osich out there starting the second half. Goes inside to Kyle Hines. Higgins gets it over to Tivoran Savage. He's been good all game. That one rolls out and Vesely comes up with a rebound and gets a little push by Kyle Hines as he does it. So a foul on Kyle Hines. And it's just little things like that that could change games. That beautiful looking three pointer almost went in, rattled in and out. But that's a huge play for Fenerbahce. They get a basket there because right now you got to think about a point a minute. That's what you're thinking about again. A point a minute, you have to beat the other team. Right? Bogdanovich to Slukas. Goes in the corner to Kalinich inside to Vesely and a nice quick reaction by Vesely to make the reverse. Nice start for Fenerbahce. Pressure on the inbounds from Fenerbahce but just gets it across half court. Does Dipolo before the eight second violation. Warren Savage, ball tapped away by Kalinic. This is it, a stop in a basket. A stop in a basket is what you're looking for. That's what's going to get you back in the game. And not only is that going to get you back in the game, we're going to try to create doubts in the mind of Cesco. You see the handoff and the ball touch the end line. Kalinic knowing his team needs every break they can get. Praying for and getting that call. Foul by Slukas. Foul on uh, Ted Osich, drawn by Slukas, I should say. Fenerbahce inbounds to Bogdan Bogdanovich. They have the first basket, the second half. They back inside the Vesely. He's Kicks out to Slukas, comes out and gives him a screen. Slukas to Kalinic in close off the front of the rim. And in there fighting for the rebound. Kyle Hines picked up by Mondo de Colo. Dan Osic goes around Vesely, gets inside, goes to Hines, gets the basket and is fouled. Talk about threading the needle. <laughs> Surrounded by defenders, the ball got through does, and Heinz got it up. How does Heinz get this up? There's arms everywhere. 
First the pass and then the shot. You can't imagine there's any space between all those and people. And Vesely is huge. He's long. I mean, I don't know how that ball got through there, but Heisman's a great play for an and one. Heisman makes the three-point play and gives this guy's biggest lead to the ball game, 21 points. They get the Colo there for, for the blocking foul. If I'm not mistaken, that will be the third foul on no yeah. the Colo. He's trying to pick up the offensive foul there on Bogdanovich coming off the pick. Not a bad looking play. When you got two fouls, you got to be a little bit careful. But when you're up 22 or you're up 21, you have the luxury to maybe be able to do that. Even if he threw his thought that was an offensive foul. The Colo stays out there with three fouls. Although Burdovanov has come up, uh, stood up off the bench. Bogdanovich. Sorry. Vesely inside. Oh. Blocked by Voron oh. Savage. Vesely came up with the ball but was on the end line. So huge play. Orange by Savage. Andre Voron Savage. Not known for his shot blocking. But look at this. But gets up and reads it perfectly. Times it perfectly. Vesely waited a little bit to release that ball. Usually Vesely likes to get rid of that ball quickly on the way up. This time he waits. Look at, the, look at that timing Beautiful by timing. Moron Savage. Doesn't have the and look at him. leap. Look at him say, get that out of here. Don't bring that into my house. And Vesely ended up on the floor, got the ball, but was touching the end line. Turns into a turnover for Zanerdabache and everybody making big plays for Sisaka. Higgins. Trying to get across half court, almost doesn't. And it is an eight second violation for Seska turnover. He's saying that the ball was touched, I think, over, over the half court line, but I don't think they're going to get away with that one. It's an eight second violation as Venere by Chip Ball. With a lot, they've been pressuring in the, in the backcourt throughout the uh, first part of this third quarter. And they got a couple out of it so far. They got a couple. This is a turnover in this case. He do just mention it in, the, in, in George's interview with him. He knew that they're going to be pressured full court, but a lot more pressure on their offense right now. Atome. Inside to Bogdanovich posting up Aaron Jackson goes right off the backboard with a quick turn. Well, gets the lead back, gets a difference down to 19. Jackson has committed a turnover. Called a double dribble which there. The, which is hard to see from where we are. Looks like they called a double dribble on this player here, picks it up. Yeah, got his hand under the ball. That's the old school carry. Yeah, got his hand under the ball, and, and you can't do that and dribble it again. Matome out top, shoots for three, in and out for him, but Vesely for the rebound and, and puts it in. And you saw how quickly Vesely got that one up that time. He's like, I'm not getting this one blocked again. That's what I was talking about before. He loves to get that ball quick and get it up. The center is starting to feel a little bit here. Turnover by Siska. Yep. And the full court pressure is paying off, and it's giving them also some uh, activating their offense as well. Decolo, that the, the third foul, Decolo becomes important because they had to get him off court, and now, and now the pressure defense can concentrate on uh, keeping Ted, keeping the ball out of Teodosic's hands. They knew it was coming. He just talked about it at halftime. He knew this pressure was coming. Now how are they going to handle it? Vesely hands off to Slukas. Gets it to Bogdanovich. Guarded by Jackson inside the Vesely. On the mismatch, his pass is picked off by Boron Savage. Boy, if you're Vesely, you got to take that. You got to tear those inside you. You've already been playing well. You have to take that. Be more aggressive offensively. Make a defensive man come to you before you try to make that pass. Jackson now on the wing, nine on the shot clock, looking inside for Warren Savage on a mismatch with Slukas. It'll be Jackson firing from deep off the mark, but Warren Savage doesn't get the rebound. Oh, Cowardice great look. comes up with it, but a foul committed to stop that break.
Little fan problems here. What a great look by Collins. I can't believe it. it's a shame they called that foul because it really could have got an easy basket. I think it was Lucas that was out in a fast break. Fans getting into the spirit of things there on the sideline. Frank, a little too close to the That's game. That's what a transition foul can generate in terms of uh, emotions yeah. in a Turkish Airlines Yearly Championship game. It's a little contact, man. I think there'll be comments of one of the fans in the front row. And something we can't have in basketball. You can't have anything to make contact with players. Fans have to stay in the spot. Starting to eat up even more now. Waiting to get back in the action is some of the fans getting a little too uh, into the game. See the foul by Kalinic. As a fan touched uh, Nikola Kalinic as he was going out of bounds. We had to calm this down. Come on, the protagonists are the players. We have to get this game back to playing. Sit everybody down, get everybody relaxed, kick people out. If you need to kick people out, we don't. Th if you got a front row seat, no big deal. Things are getting back under control. We'll get back to action. 36-53 uh, advantage for Cisco Moscow. As the timeout comes on the floor, uh, we look at some of the views of that particular incident which is Kalinic somehow drifting off the floor himself because he was a couple meters in yeah, but when, the, when the foul, foul was committed uh, to stop the break I'll tell you one thing though I'll tell you what this did it broke a little bit of the momentum for Fenerbahce Fenerbahce had a couple steals got a couple easy baskets we're going on that fast break this whole play kind of broke the momentum for him they need to come out and pick it up Resume action here early in the third quarter. Still 6:36 to play in this third quarter. It was a 20-point lead at halftime for Cesar Cod. It's been cut to 17 through the first three and a half minutes. And it'll action. be Fenerbahce ball with a chance to cut it a little further as Slukas has the ball out top. Pavel Korobkov in the game. For Tesaka, and the pass sails out of bounds, but Korobkov called for kind of bump it into uh, Vesely at the moment the pass was arriving. Fifth foul there, and Tesco two shots now in the last six minutes of this uh, this third quarter for for Fenerbahce, but we do have Vesely in the line who's 0 for 4 tonight. He's got to shake that 0 for 4 and try to try to drop a couple. Of He's real important for his team going down 17. Get themselves back into this game. Every point counts right now for Fenerbahce. Vesely, uh, zero for four at the free throw line so far tonight. This is his fifth. Let's reset the lineup. Stekolo comes back in with three fouls for Sesaka, Kyle Hines, Teodosic, Kordovanov, and Jackson. And it's Lucas Bogdanovich, Vesely, Kalinic, and Datome for Fenerbahce. So basically, three point guards on the floor for Sesaka to deal with the pressure by. That Fenerbahce has been putting up. Small ball indeed. I think uh, Gordbanov about two meters, two or three is the tallest guy on the court for Seska. Gordbanov goes back to Dekalo. will shoot it from three and miss everything. Good defense again by Fenerbahce. Yeah, great game. Fenerbahce is still keeping up the defensive intensity. Best three there on Dekalo. Getting out of Dekalo asking for the foul, of course. A little slow developing that play, had to shoot it probably when he didn't want it want to. Slukas driving, whips a pass around to Tommy open on the wing, can't get the shot to drop. That's a good call here by the referee, Kyle Hines, using his body to keep Vesely off the boards. Maybe push him a little bit too much, but what a great play by Slukas to find Datomi. Great shot by Datomi right there for the three. Now to take that shot. And that's the third foul on Kyle Hines. You can see that right there, the push. Yeah, you saw the two-hand push, which you don't see Kyle Hines needing to do. No, very you're off. Right. With that body, all you gotta do is dig your shoulder into the middle of, of, of Vesely's chest, and that's gonna move him itself. Well, yeah, there's time out on the floor, 36-53. And we see our 
inside a ref cam. Some of the uh, conversation on the sideline between the refs and the officials in the, at the game table and of course the coaches and some of the uh, bird's eye view from the referees themselves of the action. Something it's hard to find anywhere else. It's just uh, fascinating. <laughs> close up view of uh, some of the uh, interaction between the protagonists on the, on the court and on the sidelines uh, that we can see throughout the final four. But as we come back, Fenerbahce fighting, fighting, fighting to get back in this game, and they've, they've taken uh, a couple steps in the right direction with their with their full court pressure, kind of breaking. I mean, Seska could do no wrong in the second yeah. quarter, and in this third quarter, it's been a struggle. They've only got three points to six for Fenerbahce, but more than that, Fenerbahce has slowed the game down and turned it into a defensive struggle when Seska was scored 50 points in the first half, yeah. simply put. And, and they need to put points on the board. Here we go, best at the line again, 0 for 6. He's got to make his shot. He's not making it. Teammates are giving them five, trying to get into the game, but this is so important for this team because they're playing so hard defensively, and they're getting the turnovers, they're getting the, the missed shots, and they're getting the rebounds, but they're not converting on the other end. Cannot buy a free throw. John Vesely, 0 for 8 now. Ted Osich with Dekalo and Jackson. So three ball handlers on the floor. Dekalo. Loses the ball, but he was fouled by Vesely. He commits his second. He's still Vesely, moving. Vesely. Oof. Well, Brodovich is staying with him, though. He knows that he's his big man right now. He's got to keep him in the game. Second foul on Vesely. And as you said, George, at the top of this half, these first minutes of the second half, which are proving very tough, are are about Fenerbahce trying to take this game to a physical level and take that that smooth, incredible offense of Seska away. They're afraid they've held them to three points in five minutes, but they haven't been able to chip away at the lead. They've only been able to chip away and get down three points in 17. And that's that's been the problem for Miss Foss and this Teodosis for three. For three. It's fouled by and it's Lucas. It's a third foul on this possession by Fenerbahce, and this puts a, a really good free throw shooter on the line, Milos Teodosic. And, and this is where you, these are the plays that really hurt you now because you're putting a free throw shooter like Teodosic on the line to shoot three. You fought so hard in these five minutes, the whole night you're going to give up three easy points on the line from Teodosic. If he makes it, oh, he missed the first one for him. It's contagious. That's the first miss of the game, however, for Seska. They were 11 for 11 before Ted Osage missed that one. Makes the second. Ted Osage for the season, 88%. So. Better about you have to keep up this defensive intensity. They're going to have to get some scores if they can, easy scores, and put that full court pressure and see if they can create some more turnovers. Yeah. Two out of three for Tedos. He gets the lead back to 19, right to 19. so it's kind of a, a wash for the first yeah. five minutes here. And, and you played your best basketball defensively in five minutes, and you haven't been able to create anything offensively. Tedos gets caught up in the screen by Vesely and commits a foul. And Vesely prevents a the possible prevents a possible three point play, three oh. point shot in favor of putting Vesely on the free throw line. This is obviously a tactic since we saw little used Dimitri Kuligan come in the game end of the first half and and foul Vesely, who is now 0 for 9 at the free throw line. This is a uh, this is great scouting and uh, a great tactic. Face it, if if it was anybody else on the free throw line. Fenerbahce would be five, six points better yeah. at this moment than yeah. they are. You're talking the game being under 15 points and be a little bit more manageable and re reachable. They're just not letting Vesely get the ball anywhere near the basket where he dunks it and is about 100%. But I think that block by Warren Savage was also a, a real key play here in the second half and just showed that the defense of Seska would not rest and will do anything they, they can to keep Fenerbahce from getting back in this. 
now an 18 point game. Decalo off one foot, misses everything. And the ball comes to Datome. Bogdanovich on the run, looking for Slukas. In and out for Slukas, rebounded by Kurbanov. Three for 17, if that could count as a three pointer. I don't know if his foot was on the line. Ted Osa trying to answer, hits the front of the rim. Wait, you and know, that's out of bounds. A lot of, and for all the great offense we saw by Sisk in the beginning of the game, really uh, disjointed, let's say, uh, attempts at the basket now. Fenerbahce is kind of taking them out of the game, but you know, yeah, you have to expect the team's going to die down a little bit. They're not going to play that high paced offense throughout the whole game. They're going to have the low points, and that's the low points. But it's such a shame. It's so hard to watch a guy like Vesely shoot one for 10 from the foul line. He's doing so many things for his team on a defensive end. He's contributing so much. And to watch him go one for ten is frustrating for him. It's difficult to watch from our, our viewpoint also. Into the game for Fenerbahce, Pedro Antic, but it's Bogdanovic to the rim. Gets interrupted by Victor Kriapa, who came in the game for Sesaka. Also in the game, Epe Udo for Fenerbahce. Nicolo between his legs three times goes around Udo. And the foul is called on Epe Udo. And that will put Nando De Colo on the free throw line. And you see the hook by Udo. And you put Mr. De Colo on the line. A 90% free throw shooter. One of the best in the business, Mondo de Colo. Knocks down the three pointer. It's been such a tough struggle for Fenerbahce up to now. Right now, De Colo makes his free throw. It's right back to that 20 point lead that we saw at the end of the second quarter. Six ranked free throw shooter this season with over 90%. Misses that one, however, De Colo. Or the lead is now back to 19. It's Lucas inside, up Beautiful. and under, and we saw him do that to save the uh, semifinal and send it to overtime for Fenerbahce with his driving layup. He's a big game player, and there's plenty of time left. Ted Osic going back to the free throw line. He's an expert at drawing fouls. It's so hard because you want to be aggressive defensively here. You want to try to cause turnovers, but you can't foul guys like Dicolo and like Teodosis. The guys are hitting 88 to 90% free throws, free throw percentage. You can't give them to the line and let them accumulate points with the clock stop. And of course, those kind of guys are very good at drawing fouls yeah. as well. And Teodosis hits the first of two. They were first in the league at drawing fouls, Seska Moscow this season. Average of 23 per game they shoot. And Ted Osic makes both. Keeps that lead hovering around right where it was at halftime. It was 20 at halftime, it's 19 now. And even though you'd say that Fenerbahce has played better, it's still Mitch and accomplished kind of thing for these guys, they take the steal away from Udo, who just couldn't handle the pass. That was a beautiful play, and that's a play that Udo likes to get, cutting down the middle. Just never got his hands on the ball there. Nicolo driving the one-hander oh. off the backboard, past the shot blocker. Smooth as you like by Nando de Colo. And back to a 21-point lead matching the high of the game. He extends his body so well from so far away from the basket and gets that ball laid up. Lucas in the corner to Bobby Dixon, kicks it to Pedro Antic for three. Finally, a three-pointer goes down for Canerbache. He needed an answer right then, and Pedro Antic gave it to him. Kriapa bringing it across half court to Ted Osic. Barely got that across half court, too, right at the 16 second mark. Ted Osic, step back three for him. Oh, On the mark, Milos Ted Osic, answering Pedro oh, Antic. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and he's our top scorer with 17 points in this game, five rebounds, four assists, Ted Osic. Lucas another reverse wow. and gets the foul splitting and going through the entire defense of Seska. Let me tell you something about Lucas right he is not giving up he doesn't care what happens he's going to basket every time. look at this move hang time using his body the English had the ball off the back we're putting in drawing the foul getting the foul shot he's not going to give up he's 
He's trying to get his team motivated. He's well, been here before. He's got a lot of experience. This man was on the floor when yeah, Olympiacos exactly. came back from 19 down with 11 minutes to play to win this title in 2012 against Esca. So he knows what it's like to come back from this deficit. As does Pedro Antic, the guy who scored the last one. So two three-point plays by those former champions. Suddenly cuts the difference to 18 again. They could get this in his last few minutes, down underneath that 15-point mark. They could start putting a little bit of doubts in Jessica's head. But they got to keep doing it on the defensive side. Good below. So Higgins is now in the game. Looking inside for Kordopkov. He has the advantage. The ball's shot finally by Kurbanov, but not near the best. And Bobby Dixon comes up with the rebound, brings it across half court. It's Lucas to Udo, inside to Antic, foul from behind by Nicolo, who gets four. his fourth foul. Number four on Nicolo right there. Beautiful play by Udo, First looking for Antic down low. Saw, read the beautiful high low there with Higgins on Antic down there. And there you see. Rondo de Colo grabbing the arm of Pedro Antic of four fouls with 11 and a half minutes left in this game for the MVP of the Turkish Airlines Euro League and the top scorer this season means that Sesc is going to have to do it the hard way. And they, and they struggled a little bit with him earlier in his third quarter on the bench getting over that half court with the pressure by Fenerbahce. But Fenerbahce has to keep that pressure up. It's hard to do for the last 20 minutes of this game, but this is it. This is all they have left. They got 11 minutes and 49 seconds up in their, in their EuroLeague season. Antic hits the first of his two free throws and makes the second one good as well. And, and here's the full court pressure. Everybody's up. Even Antic is up. Oh. 16 point lead for Sezaka as Bobby Dixon gets called for tripping. Aaron Jackson, who will walk the other way and take two free throws as well. It's a very long third quarter, which plays into the hands of Fenerbahce. I, I couldn't tell myself what happened there. Big mess in there, but Aaron Jackson only 63% free throw shooter this season. Makes that one, Aaron Jackson does. Doesn't get the free throw line an awful lot. Can make two here as we see Warren Savage come back on the floor. And Aaron Jackson so makes both he makes both, and says he's playing with two power forwards against two bigger guys of uh, Fenerbahce, Udo, and Antic. Victor Kvia on the switch has Slukas. Slukas stops and pops from deep, misses. People flying for the rebound. Let's see who the foul is called on. We could, we could talk about Theodosic's game. It's 17 points. Nicolo is 10 points, and and his is six assists and everything they're doing. We talk about MVPs and everything. But this guy that we see in the screen right now, he's doing this. is amazing. He's done some things in his final four, changing defense. He talked about it at halftime, and it's just been amazing. The way he's matching up, the way he's. The way he has his team so prepared to switch, and when they do switch, everybody's aware of how to rotate. When it's a little man with a big man, a big man with a little man, uh, it's well, well coached team right now in this final four. You know, Antic misses the first of his two free throws. Now that's 15 for 27 as a team. Fenerbahce uh, by just shooting more at the free throw line, but actually making fewer than Cesca Moscow is 18 for 20. Makes the second one. 17 point lead. Minute 32 left in the third quarter. Aaron Jackson facing the pressure gets across half points to Higgins. You want to get a couple stops here if you can. Finish out this quarter strong. Better about to give yourself some confidence going into the fourth quarter. Well, on seven swings it to Kordovanov. Back to Victor Riapa. Inside to Jackson on the back door. Makes a layup. Great look by Griapa. Great cut by Jackson. Lead back up to 19. What a great look by Griapa from the top of the key. Looked like he wanted to shoot that ball. You saw Jackson cut into the basket. Made a beautiful dish. Bobby Dixon shadowed by Aaron Jackson. It's Lucas inside to Udo. Double team. Gets it out to Dixon. For three on the mark. Bobby Dixon keeping... Fenerbahce 
and falling more behind. 40 seconds there, Frank. This is huge right now for Fenerbahce to get a stop. If they get a stop, another two or three points and this is going in this fourth quarter. Gives them momentum. It's going to bring their fans back into it also. Jackson guarded by Udo on the switch. Goes around him, gets inside, hands off to Goran Savage, and he's fouled from behind. Another thread the needle pass between two defenders. Seska has made a habit of that in this game, and that's one way to avoid the shot blockers. The, the problem with the, the problem with the passes is the fact that the guards are in Jackson. They're getting to the basket. Two reasons. What Zelko talked about earlier in the, in, the, in the first half was they're letting people get to the basket too quickly, too easily. When they do that, what happens is the defense has to converge, which leaves the other big men open. They were lucky right there; they didn't get an and one. That puts Andre Boren Savage on the free throw line. Not almost a better three-point shooter than uh, than. Uh, Free throw shooter. Uh, not that first one though. 21 seconds. Makes two. Warren Savage gets the lead back up to 18. With 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Slukas across half court. Gives it to Dixon. Gets it back. Looking inside for Udo. Well, they have not given Udo anything down low. He has struggled all night long. They have done such a great job being physical because he's a very physical player offensively, and they have come right back at him. They've used their physicality to keep him away from the basket, not give him good looks. Udo got his own rebound, however, and got fouled by three up and going to the free throw line. But there you see it, just two points for the night for Epe Udo, who averages uh, 12, I believe. For the season, 12.5, but was even bigger than that in the playoffs, as we call both on offense and defense. But Vesely was injured. He just. But, but who knows? Four points, Frank, are off on the foul line. He hasn't converted a shot yet. He's only taken three in this game. They're just not giving him anything. He's not seeing the basket at all. Again, I'm going back to this being the MVP for this team. He's done a great job of coaching. Every time that Messi and Udo have cut to the basket, they've met a defensive player. Well, he learned from the master on the other bench, Joko Bradovich, but they were really a good coaching team. Higgins to try to finish the quarter. Can't get it to drop. And after 30 minutes in the Turkish Airlines Euro League Championship game, it is 53 for Fenerbahce, Istanbul, 69 for Seska Moscow. A four point pickup by Fenerbahce in the third quarter, but they have time to come back in the fourth to try to come and win it. Turkish Airlines, Doge Group, Spalding, Intersport, and Turkey Home. Official global sponsors of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. We come back for the fourth quarter of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Championship game. It was Seska Moscow racing out in the second quarter after a 2022 lead after one quarter. They made an 18 point difference in the second quarter. Just blew Fenerbahce off the floor for 10 minutes and led 30 to 50 at halftime. And now they're up by 16, 53, 69 after three quarters. And there you see the two head coaches tonight were a coach and team for 13 seasons at Panathinaikos where they won five year league titles together and side by side and always together, lead assistant and head coach, not just any assistant, Joko Bravich has talked many times about how he was more than assistant coach to him, Dimitri Satoudis, and in fact, Dimitri Satoudis uh, had Joko Bravich as his best man at his wedding and the godfather of one of his children, and uh, that's how close these two men were. It was funny, over the years you would hear uh, a lot of people think they were mad at each other on the sidelines because they like to argue during the games <laughs> about what to do. And Joko has told me 
plenty of times that's the intensity I wanted in an assistant coach somebody yeah. gets in my ear and helps me figure out what move to make a lot of but a lot of fans would see that they, these guys are arguing with each other they wanted that they wanted that intensity and it certainly paid off with more time more yearly titles won between these two men than, than any other team has won in the final four era I, I talked to Zelko about his friendship with him the other day personally and it's just an amazing friendship that they have and I know Zelko wants the best for him and Zelko would love to see them win a championship someday but, but not, not today <laughs> <laughs> not today I can tell you that right now well his team Fenerbahce has 10 minutes to make up a 16 point deficit as they inbound for the beginning of, beginning of the fourth quarter it's Lucas gets it to Dixon back to Dixon on the wing shadowed by Higgins inside the Udo as he dropped Ted Osage. Good and finish, but got his rebound and blasted it home. And that's the way Udo scores, right there on the dunk. Follow up dunk. Breaking the pressure, Sace got way ahead to Higgins, but they pull it out to Ted Osage. You wonder how long they'll go without Nicolo, as long as they can, I guess. Yeah, they're going to try to go longer than they can, but what they can't do is they can't get too complacent, Frank. They got to be able to Higgins score. Higgins in the corner to three up off for three. And that's what they need to do. They Great. cannot be complacent in this game. Great look by Higgins. He came in and had a chance to put up a floater, but saw three up a free in the corner and perfect timing for that three pointer. Dothome trying to answer off the mark and three up a with the rebound. Here's a guy who has played in 10 Final Fours. A more than any other player in Final Four history. First one in 2003 for Sesca. Here he is in 2016, and you know he wants it bad too. He won one in 2008 with Sesca, but came to them in midseason. Uh, Jackson misses a three pointer. And, and came to them in midseason, didn't have a big role in the one that he won. Th this has got to mean so much to him because recently had so much. There's another dunk by Udo right down the middle. He's had so many injury problems lately in the last couple of years. For him to be out here and be healthy in this final four is so important. Though. Difference of 15 now is as close as Fenerbahce has been since uh, the middle of the second quarter. Ted Osic shadowed by Bobby Jackson. Gets the ball inside to Warren Savage to uh, clear up by misses, and Warren Savage commits the foul on the rebound against Gigi Datome. Here's yeah. the first dunk by Udo. Right now you're at 15 points with eight minutes left in the game. What you're thinking in your mind, if you can get this thing to 10 with five minutes left, you start to put a little bit more pressure on Jessica. Like I said, they have to continue to play, but Fenerbahce's goal right here, their key, before the five-minute mark is get this to 10 or under. Dixon tries to go inside to Udo. It's way up against his hand in the ball and tries to save it as it goes out of bounds. Can't do that. It'll remain Fenerbahce possession with 13 on the shot clock. Datame slips but completes the pass to Slukas. He drives. Misses his layup attempt. Good defense by Voron Savage. Seska almost loses the ball. Oh, was Ted close. Osic comes up with it. Guarded by Slukas. Great hands Stolen. by Udo right there. Stolen by Udo. Foul committed by Ted Osic. Cheska's looking a little bit sloppy at offense, but again, we always talk about this. When you're down by 10, 15, 16 points, whatever the, the deficit is, you have to come back on defense. You have to come back with defense, but you also have to be effective on your offensive end. And a timeout on the floor with Cheska holding on to a 15 point lead, 57 72. With 7.32 to play in the Turkish Airlines Junior League Championship game to we'll see who becomes this year's champion. We see again our insider rep cam with a close up view and some of the conversations and some of the play right here. The call against Kyle Hines on a, on a foul earlier. We'll see exactly what the referee sees and some of the discussion he has with the protagonists of the game. We can't be any closer to the action than the insider ref cam. We see Cesca Moscow, President Andre Batum, 
waiting out the last 7.32 of this game. Of course, this team has been close a lot in the recent years and haven't been able to lift this title. They're in their first final since 2012 when they, when they lost on the last shot. And they also lost in 2009 on the last shot of the game. If it had gone in, they would have won. And in the case of 2000, here in Berlin in 2009, they had the last shot to win in a loss. They were trying to defend their 2008 title. Haven't won one since 2008, but have had two losses on the last shot of the game. A lot of history. One out by them and one in by Olympiakos in 2012. So you can see why he's, waiting. he's sweating out these last seven and a half minutes with his team up 15. He Absolutely. knows nothing's over until it's over. As Lucas gets the ball across half court, shadowed by. Aaron Jackson, they lob inside to oh, what a play. back door. What a play. Antics for the slam and the foul. Great look by Udo. Great cut by Antic. Let me tell you something, that's Zelko Obradovich at his best. They got that timeout. They set that play up beautifully for the back pick. Cut Udo down to the low block, the, the, to the low post. Give him the ball inside, and you see the back pick coming for Antic. What a great play set up right there. And you needed that quick hitter right there. And on top of you get the end one. Get back. Here come the fans. Here come the fans, Frank. I'm Under starting Bache to feel it. Most of the fans in this building. They're starting to feel it. Starting to feel and yellow. Antic has 14 points. 9 for 10 for the free throw line. It has his team within 12, which is basically as close as they've been for a long time in this game. Higgins to Jackson. Still has the ball, Jackson. Driving, goes over Udo, puts Whoa. it down. Aaron Jackson, huge basket. Oh, that's huge because let me tell you something, that was a great defensive effort by Fenerbahce. Jackson still got that ball up over Udo, dribbles it in. Bobby Dixon on the wing, comes out top with the ball. He's going to fire up a three. Off the mark, Udo inside for the rebound. Big Udo going up for two shots. Let's see if the call is for him to get two shots. He's, been going, he's going up. And he went up so quick that. That's it right there. He's going to get those two free throws. Ted Oceans now has four fouls. A lot of guys with four fouls on. Says Scott, Dunder Nicolo, Ted Osic, Aaron Jackson, and Pavel Korobkov, four and each. Comes, and look who's coming in. They're not going to keep the girl on the bench for too much longer, Frank. Udo drops the first shot. He's doing two for two here. Six for eight from the free throw line. So you know who the ball is going to for Fenerbahce for a while. Both uh, Udo and, and Antic together are 15 for 18 from the free throw line. And, and you can bet that they're going to go right at the Colo right now. They're going to go right at him offensively if they can. This is uh, the MVP of the year, Lee Dick Colo, in the game. Again with four fouls, goes right to the basket, tries to go to the corner. Dixon in the passing lane, steals it. Goes inside to Udo, guarded by Hines. Turns around with the hook shot, misses. Antic has the rebound, blocked by Warren Savage out of bounds. Yeah, but they're so aggressive right now. Look at Antic, he's jacked up. He's ready to go. He won a foul call there, but man, they are really going at it. Fans hey, here they there come. Bache are into it. We talked 10. We talked 10 points with five minutes. They've got a minute 16 left. It's a 12 point game right now. It'll be 14 seconds on the shot clock when Finerbache inbounds. They may be looking at it to make sure of that because uh, the ball glanced off the rim. And of course, in that case, it becomes a new possession on the offensive rebound of 14 seconds only, not 24 seconds. But the referees are just making sure that the ball hit the rim, we believe. And you know something? For, for you to do this, even if the ball didn't touch the rim or if he gets the call, he doesn't get the call. What he's doing right now is he's breaking the momentum of Fenerbahce. They got a little bit of momentum going. It's the same thing that happened earlier with the fans. They a little momentum going. They broke it. They do this again. Just a genius move. Because 
Even if there's a doubt, you say, hey, let's look at it. What does that do? I just as, shut as you as down. As far as you're concerned, bit. he's well aware of touching the rim and he wants. Oh, yeah, I, I'm sure he no, probably knows it does. But the it rim. would be Fenerbahce that would be asking for the for replay in this case. It, I mean, he, the, the dude just wants to stop things. He only, he, maybe, they only give fun. him so many timeouts in a game, Frank. He's got to figure out a way to stop some of his momentum. 6 16 to play in the fourth quarter. 12 point lead. Fenerbahce with the ball. Bogdanovich back in. Watch here. Udo. You gotta go at him. Udo against. You gotta go Nicolo. at him. Nicolo. And of course, Nicolo can't foul. So Can't Udo scores. And we got a 10 point ball game with six minutes to play. And this Fenerbahce crowd, you can hear them. They're right back in it. They've been sitting, not making too much noise for the better part of a half of this game. But they are right back in it now. Nicolo. The four on seven, fakes, gets inside, runner for him off the mark. And a foul. And a foul by Goran Savage. That's two fouls, Josh. Datome will go to the foul. free throw line. Datome's a great free throw shooter as well, so a little bit of a momentum swing here. Frank, this is amazing. You got, you got Fenerbahce with no fouls right now. No fouls in this fourth quarter. You have Jessica with five fouls. 541 left. They go to the front. They go to the line every time. And what does this mean when you have no fouls? You can pick up your defensive intensity. You can risk more. You can draw a foul out in mid-court when you're trying to track. This game is slowly but surely going Fenerbahce's way. Luigi Datome puts down the first free throw. He's two for two. He's 80. 6% on the season. You can't tell me that the doubts aren't starting to get into the heads of his chest up players right now. We have an eight point ball game of 539 to play. A whole new ball game as Higgins gets it across half court. Higgins still with the dribble. And a foul committed by Bogdanovich. That's. That's what I was talking about. You can play a little bit more aggressive right there, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to foul after you give up 15 seconds of the shot clock. When you have the team down underneath 10 seconds of that shot clock, that's when you want to pick up defensively and make them force a shot. Joey was a five, 12 to five advantage and assist at halftime for Siska. There's now 17 to 12. Another factor, and not moving the ball as well. Higgins, three up, up for three. He up oh! on the board, trying to stop the Fenerbahce momentum, gets the lead back to 11. Huge shot by Victor Kriapa. Boy, He's that's now a... up to eight points with two for four from downtown. Man, that's a money shot right there. Dixon. Udo on the mismatch has Jackson inside, goes for the... Misses and gets his own rebound, gets it back to Datome right on the board. GG Datome. Right back out. He's up to 13 points. And we have an eight point ball game. Oh, this place is so loud right now. Nicolo inside, misses at the rim. It looks like the foul is called on Kyle Hines and send Pedro Antic to free throw line. We had a possibility of getting this game down. I was blocked by rate. Udo. Udo got a hand on that. Ever since Udo got that follow-up dunk, he has put himself back into this game. Such a testament of a great player when you don't take yourself out of the game at all. He's also 9 for 10 for the free throw line, so not the guy you want to foul if you're Sessica Moscow. With 4.31 to play, Snukas comes back in. Bogdanovich goes off for Finnebache. And here comes Teodosic. You know he couldn't keep Teodosic on the bench for too long. Teodosic replacing Higgins, a three-point guard lineup for Sesaka. You have to be kidding me, Frank. We have 4.30 left in this game, and we're about to have, if he makes both his free throws, a two-possession game. We talked about it from the beginning. No one go anywhere. This game is going to come down to the end. It's good as gold with the first one. He didn't like that one, though. He didn't like that freak, though. He took it and stepped off the line a little bit. He thought he was going to miss it. Makes both of them 10 for 11 for 12 from the free throw line is Benno Antic. On an 18 to 8 run in 
the fourth quarter for Fenerbahce. Nicolo gets inside, gets fouled by Antic. Let's see if that comes with free throws. And what a was fouled on the floor. What a vet right there. That's a better move right there. You knew he was no way he was going to stop Nicolo from getting to the basket. He fouled him on a dribble, fouled him away from the basket. Make sure you don't give up that free throws. And it's only the second team foul for Fenerbahce. Those are those fouls to give that yeah, you, you talked to. about. It. They're like very valuable now in this situation. You have two more of those. Close. You have two more of those right now to give before we have to start worrying about them going to the foul line. Be smart with them. Be effective with them. Ted Osage inbounds to Nicolo. Fakes. Goes inside to Kyle Hines. Reversed oh. by him. Good look. A good finish by Kyle Hines. Big baskets needed. Just for say he's going to hang on to this lead. Now back up to eight. Bobby Dixon against Ted Osage. Gets around him, goes to the corner. It'll be Kalinic for three. Off the mark, but look at Bobby Dixon, the smallest guy on the floor with the rebound. Goes to Udo for the slam. How does Bobby that Dixon? Is hard. How does Bobby Dixon get that rebound? A lot of heart in Bobby Dixon, that's for sure. If you saw his story, he came from nothing. Oh, and the hands by again, Udo. Not the man with the steal. Lucas on the run. Dixon looking for three. Doesn't take it. We have a six-point ball game. He's going against Nicolo. He takes it anyway. Oh! On the bar. Bobby Dixon has me? made this a three-point ball game oh, with oh, 3.25 oh. to play. Unbelievable. The rebound was one thing. The three-pointer over Nicolo. Bobby what? Dixon has made it a whole new Turkish Airlines Early Championship game. Don't go away. Oh. Not the man with the steal. The doubts are there now. There's no doubt about it. They need to talk this out this time out. Let me talk about Bobby Dixon. Oh. I did a story with him this year about his life story, and it was nothing in the way of privilege coming up. A disadvantaged youth who had problems in his family throughout his young life and ended up in big problems himself and decided that he was going to make a difference and get out of it, as we see. Here's the replay of what happened to say Scott when they were up 19 points with 11 left in one final and lost. They were up again in a semifinal two years later and lost on that last shot, lost on two last shots. And last year, up eight with three minutes to play, lost to, get to Olympiacos and sweating out the difference right now as it goes down to three points with 325 to play. Boy, you got a lot of worried fans right now dressed in red and a lot of real happy fans dressed in yellow and black. And we neglected to mention that the last foul on Warren Savage was his fifth. And of course, he's been a huge player for them all season. They don't have him the rest of the way, but 541 to play. They lost him for the game. Fouls are coming into play for Sesaka because they can't play as tough defense now with with Nicolo on four, Teodosic on four. Again, and the fans back. of Fenerbahce feel that they, their team has a chance to win this ball game. Go back to the fouls. Nicolo working with Kriapa gets the ball across half court. Kurbanov in the game. Oh. Oh, foul that was by, close. Foul by Natomi, but it was close to a steal by Natomi. Lots of great pressure by the Fenerbahce defense. This time does not pay off, but as we said, that fouls a give. Yep. If you see him, look how physical they are. Look how physical they are. Natomi should have jumped that a little bit more because he had Nicola right there by the half court line. If he jumps that a little bit faster, he gets that ball. There is no reason for him to worry about a backdoor cut on that. There's no way Teodos is going to get it to him. Says connect to another chance, but only 12 on the shot clock. Hines hands off to Teodosic. To Dekolo, driving baseline off the backward, misses, but there is Nikita Kurbanov with the rebound. Another 14, a turnover. As Kal Kalinic tipped the pass, he gets the ball on the wing. And they went back down on Dekolo with four fouls. Nikita Kalinic. Surrounded now, oh, he, he gives up the stuck. ball, and Ted Osage comes up with it. 2.40 to play, three-point difference. Nicolo guarded by Kalinic, who played such great defense on Friday. Now 
That's the screen for Riapa. Goes against Udo. Stops. Pops over Udo. Boy, who gets a piece of it. Blocked by Udo. Udo. Bobby Dixon on the run with a chance to tie this ball game with a three-pointer. Dixon pulls it out to Slukas. Every time Udo steps out of New Golo, he lays a smackdown on him. He's defending him better than point guards defend him. Dixon goes around, three up, uh, running one hand. Oh! It goes down oh, for Bobby go. Dixon. And he has brought Fenerbahce back in with a chance to go ahead if they can get a defensive stop. It's a one-point ball game. Remember, it was 20 at halftime and 21 as a high. Now off the ball. Let's just see what's called on. Just got the fourth foul right there. From now on, Chester goes to the line. They're not concerned about that, though. They used every one of those four fouls perfectly to get themselves back into the game. They had a one-point game with 140 left. Absolutely amazing. Everything you can want in a trophy game, and you have it here in the Turkish Airlines Early Championship game, 141 to play, everything to play for. It'll be Fenerbahce ball with a one-point lead by Siska. Frank, the story, the storyline is It'll amazing. be ball, I'm sorry, with a one-point lead. This whole storyline is just amazing. We've seen this happen so many times with We hate to keep bringing it up, but you can't ignore it. It's absolutely amazing. I talked earlier about complacency. They gave, they gave a little bit complacent offensively. They didn't attack the basket as much as they should have, but it's such a tough situation. Corey Higgins back in the game, get the low one down to Triapa. Trying to get the ball to Teodosic, gives it to Higgins instead. Higgins working against Kalinich. We'll take a three pointer. Corey Higgins off the mark. Triapa can't get the rebound. And Fenerbahce with a chance to go ahead with 128 to play for what would be the first time since very early in this game. Kalinich backing down on Higgins. Gives it to Udo for the jumper off the front of the rim. Udo gets it back, ball's loose, and oh. Nando De Colo comes up with it. Oh, what a series of events like that. The dude has just called on this timeout. And one minute left, one point game. Big defensive stand right here. Dano and Siska working with a one point lead. Gets past Udo. Wow, Udo. Oh, back door oh, to De Colo! We've seen it all season! What a look by Teodosic. The two of them have combined on that play many times during the season, but to do it in the final minute of the championship game is incredible. Teodosic with eyes behind his head to see Decolo. Look at it here. Decolo with the cut. Oh, what a beautiful play at such a crucial time. Udo is doing such a great job of helping out and defending the point guards. Look at the emotion. You gotta love this. Brought tears to the eyes. We don't know if it was a Seska fan or a <laughs> Fenerbahce fan. You, you'd be crying. Well, that is a heartbreaker if you're a Fenerbahce fan. A that is beautiful if you're a basketball fan. It's a three-point game, though, I'll tell you. Unfortunately, as we see what happened in the semifinal on Friday when Costa Slukas tied it for Fenerbahce late. And he came back in this game tonight to make a couple huge layups. So watch for him, a big game player. It was about 30 seconds left when he came out of a timeout and just raced to the basket and tied it. He's on the floor now. He's the guy, about David Anderson, set, the guys, he said it to them here before. They've done this before. Let's set the lineup as we come out for the last 50 seconds of this game. Bobby Dixon, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Luigi Datome, Pedro Antic, and Epe Udo for Fenerbahce, Stefolo, Kurvanov, Riapa, Higgins, and Hines for Zesaka, Teodosic. Not on the floor for this last 50 seconds. They'll be yanking people in and out on defensive and offensive decision making. Watch here, Frank. This is where Zelga is a master, setting some out of bounds plays up. They got to be able to get it in safely first. Like Dixon clear out crossing over Higgins, taking the three pointer. Oh, oh the board! Bobby oh. Dixon is tied up. Bobby Dixon.
Jackson has. Unbelievable. A kid from nowhere with all the disadvantages in life has brought his team on the other side of the ocean back to a tie in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Championship game. He won the title, the complete and incredible story for him. But what he has done right there is complete an incredible comeback from 20 points down for Fenerbahce. And we have a ball game with 43 seconds left, 81 to 81. Let me tell I might have given himself a little bit too much credit on the setup of the play. Just give it to Dixon and let him do his thing, and he hit the three. Hot player Bobby Dixon has done a lot in the last five minutes, starting with an offensive rebound in the land of Giants, the smallest player on the court. That was your first tip off that this guy has the character to lead in this situation. And now you got to start thinking about time of possession. You have 43 seconds left in this game. All right, what does Cheska want to do with this ball? They're going to take the ball out of the front court. Do they want to get a quick shot up and make it a two for one possession? Do they want to try to get two for one? Do they want to run this down? If they miss and leave Fenerbahce with one shot, they might not get another. They might not get another opportunity to get the ball back. They might not get the ball again. Tears in the eyes of the fans here. Look at Dixon. Uh, Dixon. Benz Arena in Berlin, Germany. As uh, Cheska tries to inbound the ball. 81-81 tie, and it's been the first tie since early in this game. As you saw, Nicolo Lucas on the court for Fenerbahce. Nicolo's dribbling away some time. He's gonna try to double team him, I think, when he makes his move. A lot of switching going on. Here comes Collins. And Higgins on the wings. Hines Ooh. with the uh, Nicolo driving in, loses the ball. It comes up. Lucas comes Are up you with it. Are you kidding me? Foul by Kyle Hines. That will be the just the fourth foul of Kyle Hines, and it will send close to Lucas, I believe, to the free throw line. And now we're at the 20 second mark. They wasted enough time. They're going to get the ball back, obviously, because of the foul shots. But they only have 20 seconds left. With a chance to take the lead. Close to Lucas goes to the free throw line. He's an 85% free throw shooter for this season. A lot of disbelief on the face of Siska bench, but they will have 20 seconds left after these free throws. And Snoopers makes the first one. That's the first lead since very early in this game for Fenerbahce. This is absolutely amazing what we're seeing here. It's up to this foul shot and one defensive stand for Fenerbahce to take home this title. Two in, two point lead for Snoopers. is money. Nicolo with the ball, 19 seconds left. You definitely have to protect the perimeter. You don't want to give up a three point. Oh, ball goes Lewis. away. Teodosic comes up with it, gets it back to Nicolo for three to win it. Off the mark, rebound by Kriapa. Oh. Ties it up with 1.9 seconds left. Victor Kriapa with a game time follow up. 83 83 do not go away oh there is no telling what will happen with 1.9 seconds left and Fenerbahce having a timeout the miss on the three-pointer Kriapa puts it back in to tie the ball game big play after big play in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague championship game oh baby we have a final what a final already 1.9 seconds left. There's still a ton of time to make it more spectacular. This is absolutely amazing. The defense by Fenerbahce at the end has just been absolutely amazing. They had the worst play possible. They went after that ball twice and ended up in Tito's hands. They had a chance to get that ball and end this game quickly. The fire in the eyes of Demetrius and Tunis. He wants this title. Everybody on this floor wants this title like nothing else in their lives. Man, and every fan in this place is on their feet waiting to see what happens in the last 1.9 seconds. Set the stage for us, Joe. Well, you're looking at Selko doing his thing out here. You're going to be taking the ball out of the front court. You're looking at a pick. Probably going to try to get Bobby Dixon the ball again. What they did the last time was they switched and they put Kyle Hines out on Bobby Dixon. Let's see what they do here. But. Bobby Dixon pumping up the fans. You got Batame taking it out. You got Bogdanovich who can shoot as well. You've got. Watch for Udo here going to the basket. Watch for Udo with a 
Satome. There it is. Inside the Udo, turnaround jumper. Can't make it. Kyle Hines was putting up the defense. And that means we will go to overtime five more minutes at least before a EuroLeague champion can be decided between the two best teams all season long. They're going to take five more minutes to see which of them deserves to lift the trophy. Frank, I don't think I could do it. How are they going to do it? <laughs> and you mean announcing, not playing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My voice is going to hang in there anymore. Remember, last year's. It's 83 to 83. Come back and join us for overtime to see who will be the EuroLeague champion. Turkish Airlines. Doge Group. Spalding. Intersport. And Turkey Home. Official global sponsors of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. You could not ask for anything more in a championship basketball game. 83-83, Fenerbahce, Istanbul, and Siska Moscow going to overtime at Mercedes-Benz Arena in Berlin, Germany, in what is the second year in a row of, or, uh, no, it was overtime two years ago in uh, 2014 when Maccabi beat Real Madrid, but that was the first overtime game in the EuroLeague final since 1969. And in two of the past three years, that's how close the title has come down to in this fascinating competition. And if you don't think it was fascinating before this game, 20-point comeback by Fenerbahce to take the lead in the closing second and a tip-in by a character guy, Victor Kriapa of Seska, to send it to overtime. Nobody's quitting. I can re not really tell you who has momentum going in this I overtime. No, I mean, it, it, it's absolutely unbelievable. I, mean, just, I, I never thought we were going to see a better game than what we saw in the semifinal between Fenerbahce and, and Laurel Kuzka. This is top yet. It's absolutely amazing. What a, what, a, what a competition. These two teams were kind of battling each other from a distance all season. Didn't play each other, but ended up with the same exact records coming into this game. Best records in the EuroLeague. And they both feel that this trophy should be theirs, and they're not going to waste a, a littlest bit of effort until they know it's in their hands. Tezka. Gets the ball into Teodosic to start this overtime. You got both Donovic. by Dixon. Kalinic and Datoma with four fouls with Fenerbahce. The lob inside to Kyle Hines. He's crowded. Can't get it. But Kalinic saves the rebound. Good recovery by the Fenerbahce defense. The triple team Hines. Decolo and Hines with four fouls for, for Tesco. A lot of players with four fouls on the court. Dixon, who's been the hero for Fenerbahce down the stretch, gets it to Slukas, pops a three on the mark. Costa Slukas jumping in the air. He's got Fenerbahce ahead in overtime. He's a veteran leader, Frank. He's taking it over from that first time we saw him go to the basket. Make that layup and get his team involved. Nicolo driving and fouled by Epe Udo on the way to the basket. Let's see if it's called. Oh, it's That's a second foul on Epe, Epe Udo. Epe Udo has done such an amazing job of defending Nicolò and Diodos is coming off the bit. It's such a luxury to have a guy like that to defend against point guards. It makes it so much easier for the point guards to defend the pick and roll. Lucas is pushing Erbache up three. And Nicolò, 90% free throw shooter at the line, gets one back for Cesarca. And the duel of coaches here, buddies, best best friends, coaching against each other has been everything that either of them can want as as the great coaches they are. They've won five early titles together, but neither wants to give the other one the littlest bit of a chance to lift the trophy himself while the other one watches tonight. Nicolò makes both. Dixon goes around the corner on... Hines, the ball comes out, and Teodosic steals it ahead to Higgins, going up by himself oh. and puts Seska back in front. What a beautiful play by Higgins, taking it right at the defender, making no questions about it. You got to get a good offense here by Fenerbahce. We got to get back into this game. You got Teodosic down low. With, there it is. There's your look. 
Come on, Udo in the go post on. with the mismatch. Gets it out, the, swings to Bogdanovich. Blocked by Higgins in the corner. Bogdanovich gets it back oh! and makes it right before the shot clock buzzer. I They're going to check good. it. They're going to check it. I think that was a good looking shot. I thought I saw it from here pretty good. I saw the light go off. Big shot after big shot in the Turkish Airlines early championship game. I'm going to take a moment here while there's a timeout on the floor and they check to make sure the shot was good. Look at that. Turn around on the block and catch by no doubt about Bogdanovich. It. We'll see what they say. That's the referees, money right there. But if he got it, it was just, just, just before the shot clock expired, and he did put the Nairbache back in front. I'm going to take a moment here to tell people, next year, the new EuroLeague comes, a new format where every great team plays every great team all season long, and we still end up with the Final Four after the playoff. If you think this is fun, you're going to see the best going against the best every night from next season onward for I the first time in anymore. the history of European basketball. We're going to do this every night? Rando Nicolò to Teodosic to Hines oh. to the basket and in Kyle Hines puts Seska back in front. Beautifully executed play right there. Kyle Hines cut down the middle. Back and forth on the scoreboard here in overtime. Bogdanovich, he's got one shot and he was their overtime hero in the semifinals. He kicks out to Kalinic inside the Udo spinning and he misses. Ball knocked out of bounds by Bobby Dixon. Dixon got in there. I don't know if Kriapa got a piece of that, but it did not hit the rim. I thought it went straight in, in fact, but it did. Great look, great play by Seska to get Kyle Hines an easy layup, and that, in this situation, is not easy. It'll be Seska ball with a one-point lead and 2.43 to play. They, of course, led by 20 at halftime. But had to tip the ball in on the last play of regulation time just to get to overtime. Dan Osage across half court. Working with Hines. There's Three Udo pointer again. blocked by Udo. The There's ball's loose and Lucas comes up with it. Falls down. And a kick ball by oh. Slukas. Oh. <laughs> Lucas was coming up court with the ball, got a little touch by Higgins, and hit the floor. I lost control, and then kicked it with his foot. So it will be Seska ball. The defense by Udo in the half court set is just amazing. He has been the MVP on the defensive side. Take a look to the basket again for a one-hander. He has Seska up by three. Not that time, though. Piccolo got by him. Nothing safe about a three-point lead, but a, everything shot at this point is golden. Second time in a row, he went past the best shot blocker of any season in Euro League history and just extended to the point of keeping him away from the ball enough to make a one-handed layup. Nando de Colo now up to 16 points. Zeska has six double-digit scorers. Teodosic with 17, Nicolo with 16. He's got seven assists. Both of them have seven assists as well. Kyle Hines with 13, Corey Higgins with 12. Andre Vorne, 17 out of the game with 5,000, but he had 11 points. And Victor Kriapa with 10. And probably one of the best shots of his career to send this game to overtime. Look at what Bobby Dixon did to, to bring Fenerbahce back. Three-pointer over Nicolo. A running floater. This is at the end of the fourth quarter. And then a step back three and tie the ball game. You don't think he you don't think he's gonna be getting the ball back here in the next couple of minutes? There's no doubt he's gonna have that ball in his hand here. Bobby Dixon is a big time player and wants that ball. Beno Antich leads Fenerbahce with 16 points. Dixon's got 14, Datomi 13, Epe Udo 14, I'm sorry. And close to Slukas 10. And those are the players on the floor. Going back to the small lineup like he did the other night against Labal Kuska with the Tommy. Zephyr Pedro Antic. Bogdanovich instead of Antic out there. And remember, Bogdanovich had nine of his 18 points in the semifinal in overtime. He was their overtime hero. Dixon, Penabacha down three. Gorbanov on the switch. It's Lucas. They go inside the Datome, Aaron Jackson, and the 
pass Whoa, from Natome to Udo for the dunk. It's a one point ball game again. What a dish by Natome. Going for the turnaround fadeaway. Sees the help right there. It's a beautiful left handed pass. Look at this. What a way to read the help and find Udo. Fake Kriap uh, was a very good defender, once the best defender trophy winner. Uh, thought that Datome was going for the shot, but wraparound pass and another easy basket. Nicolo and Teodosic back in together. Pretty up uh, Higgins and Hines. Cross half court is Nicolo guarded by Slukas. Off the backwards, pushed by Slukas on the shot. That'll send Nicolo to the free throw line. And that's what the MVP does best. It gets to the free throw line. He knows how to penetrate. knows how to use his body. knows how to push out defenders, but knows how to create fouls. He's a 90% free throw shooter. And you know he's got it. He's, I mean, that's where, exactly where he wants to be. This is where he feels most comfortable. Number two in foul strong in the early league this season. is Nando de Colo. That's the fourth foul on Slukas also. Number two in free throws made. Still laser focus on the part of Nando de Colo. He makes this will be the top scorer in the game. Lead back to three, 138 to play. But Fenerbahce was in worse shape than that in the, in the fourth quarter, so great do sub. not go away. Great sub right there, too, getting the call a lot on the defensive side. You don't want to have to work those mismatches. You need to be offensively. Lucas to Datame, stops and pops, a jumper rolls around. That's knocked out by Udo. It'll be Seska Moscow ball. And again, the substitution. Bring a Seadosic back in. Remember the foul situation as Joe was saying earlier, Kyle Hines with four, uh, Ted Osich with four, and Dick Alo with four. And the same side for Finnebache, Lucas with four, Bogdanovich with four, Datame with four, Nikol Kalinic with four. So even now, with 126 to play, one of those things could, one of those guys with four fouls could play a factor or not if he gets his fifth in this game. Well, I think the most important guy on the floor for Cheska, without a doubt, is Dick Alo. He's in the period of season, obviously. He needs to be out there. You don't want him to have to play defense. You know they're going to go way out. You do not want him to get his fifth foul. And that's the reason why we see this substitution carousel going on right now. We're going to take a look. Apparently, it is going to be Seska Ball. She saw the replay there with Udo. Nicolo gets it in bounds, not just barely. Guarded by Bobby Jackson. Jackson right on him. Spins. Jackson's still there. Nobody with him. He's backing down. Spins. One hander misses. But Kyle Hines there is there is. for the putback. It's a five point lead by Cesar Kyle. You saw Hines just down there smelling that play, waiting for it and waiting for it to get that ball. Dixon, the big gun, goes inside to Kalinic. And Victor Kriapo with the block from behind. Seiske in control, up five with 48 seconds left. Teodosic brings it across half court. Nicolo with the ball. Both of them are great free throw shooters. And a foul is called as the trap comes from Venerbahce. And that will put Nando de Colo on the free throw line and put He's got Moscow in the driver's seat. You never say never in this league. But good defense by Teodosic standing up straight against Kalinic. And here came Victor Kriapa. That's two huge plays for him. At the end of regulation time, one of a great shot with 1.9 seconds left on a follow-up in the air. Nothing bigger than that tapping. Let me Nothing tell you. bigger than that. That's the only reason they were in overtime. And now the block that ends up putting... Nando de Galo on the free throw line. Give him 19 points. He was the MVP of the season, and he's doing it in overtime. If you're a Cheska fan, this is exactly the man you want on that line right now in this situation. And a seven-point lead with 39 seconds left. Let's talk. These teams, this team, this club has suffered, as we said, two losses in this game, the title game, on the last shot while making it to seven out of the eight, last eight final fours. 
and they want this more than anybody. Dixon's going to try to get three back off the oh, backboard oh, and in for Bobby Dixon. Four-point ball game with 30 seconds to play. That's why I said don't go away. If you went away at any point, you're missing one of the greatest finals ever played. Bobby Dixon off the backboard. I look at the face of Demetrius Atunas. He's seen it all, and he's he doesn't believe that one either. The Moscow fans are waiting to celebrate here, but they can't. <laughs> People like Bobby Dixon are keeping them in their seats, keeping them nervous. Four-point lead, 29.9 seconds. The president yeah. Talk about nervous. Talk about nervous. His team was up 20 at halftime and up by double digits in the fourth quarter, but he's had to wait through overtime now. They were up seven, 38 seconds of play. Now it's down to four with plenty of time on the clock. It takes one takeaway. I think five minutes ago, he was better to sell his team. <laughs> now he's gonna stick around for a little while. One takeaway. It's a two possession ball game with 29 seconds left in overtime, 30 with a tenth of a second. We've seen better. We've seen better bouts of pressure on an out of on out of bounds plays. They're gonna have to do that right now. Try to get a trap. Maybe try to force the ball to the sideline where they get two players to trap and cut through the middle and get a steal. If they get a quick steal, they're not gonna get it. If not, they have to worry about thinking about power. But it's never to, over till it's no. over. But you got the best free throw shooters on the court right now. There's no doubt that Coach Atunas is going to put his best free throw shooters out there. This is the Turkish Airlines Euro League where anything can happen and probably will. We have 30 seconds in overtime to see what else these teams can dream up in a battle for the title. Kriyapa takes it. Oh, gets it to Decolo, right man at the right time. Winding down the seconds. He's challenged, gets it to Teodosis. He's got to get rid of the ball. And a foul is called on Epe Udo. Very good trapping by the Fenerbahce defense. So there's a crowd around Teodosic there, almost to steal. Udo just crowding him a little too much. He had his pivot foot held. That was exactly the trap that they needed. As I was talking about, getting that trap out of the half court line, somewhere where there's no else to pass the ball. They had a beautiful trap. Udo might have just got a little bit too aggressive down low. And Milos Teodosic with the free throw, 27 for 29. Seska tonight the free throw line, a big difference. Whereas they've only missed two, while Fenerbahce has missed 12, nine of those by Jan Vesely. And another one goes down, makes a six point lead with 17 seconds left. Seska will not take anything for granted. They cannot, knowing their history. Bobby Dixon, step back. Gets it to Datome for three. Oh. On the mark, Luigi Datome. We have a three-point ball game with 7.5 left in overtime. And I, and I keep saying don't go away. 7.5. I'm not and remember, sure. remember oh. what we saw in the, in the top 16. Cisco Moscow and Barcelona yeah. losing by six with about eight seconds left. There was a three-pointer and then a steal and, a, and another shot. With, with the game. Taking, the ball, taking ball. the ball out, gets it to Decolo, and the foul committed by Datomi. That was the key right there to get the ball out of bounds, and Decolo and Teodosic, to me, the key, the key play in this ball game was the back door between Teodosic and Decolo when it looked like before the tip-in by Kriapa, but they made two huge plays when they look like they were wilting in regulation time. And here they are in control now with 6.2 seconds left. And the great Nando de Colo on the free throw line. He's got 20 points and he's seven for eight at the line. Make it seven, eight for nine now. That's the one right there. That's the one they needed. They, needed one they of don't even two. have to play defense now. He may even miss this one on purpose. Just to, for Fenerbahce not to get a timeout and get a quick three. We shall see. Andre Matutin, the president of Seska Moscow, looking on anxiously. He's been here before, and his team has not come up with the title, losing on the last shot a couple times, and now they've had to fight through overtime to be in this position. Nikola makes it. Five-point ball game. 
Decola takes the seat. Jackson and Demetrius Nichols come in the game. As Bogdanovich takes a run in three off the front of the rim. This is how it will end with Seska Moscow, long awaited new title, and the two best friend coaches discussing what was a great and fantastic final that they themselves helped put on. Seventh yearly title for Seska Moscow, first for Dimitri Satunis as a head coach, even though he won five with Jelko Bradovic, a long embrace at half court and a little discussion like they have always had over the years, but now it's the apprentice winning against the master, but not without an incredible battle that went on for 45 minutes. And there is Andre Vatut, the president of Seska Moscow. Turkish Airlines, seven days. Nisinenok.com, Denny's Bank, Siesta, Tadim, Lenovo, Burger King, and Seg. Official global sponsors in association with the Turkish Airlines Euro League. Letting it all out after waiting so many years since 2008, that club's last title, and so many frustrations at the Final Four. Give them their due. They have gone back to the Final Four almost every year since 2008, with a, often with one of the best two or three teams record-wise, and they have had to wait. They deserve everything they get tonight for once again putting together a fantastic team and winning this title in incredible fashion, challenged every moment of the way, and still having the mental toughness to become champion, Seska Moscow. I, Frank, I don't know what to say. I honestly don't know what to say. It was absolutely amazing. One of the best basketball games I've ever seen. The fact that it's a final even makes it that much more important and that much more significant. Uh, it, just, it, it, was, it was everything we wanted to see in the game. It was probably that little spam with a 20-point lead, and you didn't want to see that. But the comeback was amazing. You mentioned that the team almost built it. They did well. They did well. But they came back with that top end, and they were able to regenerate themselves, which is so important in the overtime because they lost a lot of momentum in the game. 96, 96 to 101 in a final. You can't ask for better basketball. There may be a winner and a loser as we see Demetrius oh. to this tossed up in the air by his players. There may be a winner and a loser, and it has to be that way in basketball on this court tonight. But I think anybody who loves basketball won this game as well because you can't ask for anything more from the continental final in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague Championship game. If you Hugs were, around and much deserving. You had a feel over the years for this Tiska Moscow club and, and what they had to go, what they went through. But they went through it and came back and they won uh, with a lot of heart and a lot of character. They always had it. They always had it. And they had some bad luck in one case and just great play by another team in both cases, really. But they had a couple games in their hands that they could have uh, won the title before. And now, finally, they get a chance to feel redeemed and enjoy every single one of those hugs. We will get the chance to talk to one of these new champions, Milos Tedosic, seven losses, six losses before this. He's a champion tonight. George Zidak with Milos Tedosic. Milos, you finally got one. Tough, some tough losses since Istanbul. Just give me your feelings. I didn't know that it's that great feeling. Um, Winning this trophy now, I'm gonna work even more hard to get more uh, more trophies. How was the amazing feeling? It was tough game. We was leading by by 20, and you know controlling all game. But Fener uh, Fener is great team. They don't give up. They never give up. And you know we 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 you know we give everything what we have inside to to win this game tonight. You played with four fouls. Nando had four fouls. Yes. Kyle had four fouls. I mean. You played so many minutes, so many crucial minutes down the stretch with three key players with four fouls. How, how did you accomplish? You know, and we was playing good defense. I don't know if you agree with me. We played with the three guys. With Absolutely the agree. Yeah, we played good, good defense, and you know we show character as a team. And uh, 
Uh, you know, I'm really so proud on all these guys. We know how much we was working all, uh, during all season, and uh, you know, this is like, you know, something big for all of us. Hey, keep play in the game. A lot going down the stretch in quarter number four. You made the backdoor pass to right. Decolo to Nando. We did this. Take, take us through that play. Tell us yes. something about it. We did this so many times, you know, and we never practiced this, but during all season we was doing uh, big backdoor cuts, and it's, you know, I don't know, we have something between us about these backdoors. Is that a proof that you can win without a typical big man? You play with Kyle Hines as your, as your principal center. Kyle is huge man. This is the point, that he's huge man with huge heart. Thank you. Thank you. Milos Teodosic, finally a champion after six previous tries at the Final Four. Comes up with the big plays, including that backdoor pass to, uh, to Nando de Colo, and he wins his first title. He was at a couple Final Fours with Olympiacos and the others with Cezaka. He's lived through the heartbreaks, and give him some credit after he had 19 points, seven assists, two steals, and five rebounds for Cezaka Moscow to finally, finally lift the trophy that he so well deserves. We're going to see if we can talk to some more of the new champion, Cezaka Moscow. Remember, it's the seventh title in Cezaka's illustrious history. They waited 35 years between number four and number five in 2006, won another a couple years later. Lost by two points a year in between and one point, no, oh, two points a year in between and two points a year after, and then struggled, lost on the last shot a couple more times since then, and just, you got to give it to these guys. They, they've had to earn it tonight against Fenerbahce, and now we will hear from head coach Demetrius Etudis, who we saw with tears in his eyes as soon as we can get him to the microphone. Here he is, Demetrius Atutis, first year league title as a head coach. Coach, your first thoughts, how proud are you of your team? Honestly, if now you would excuse me, I don't have a smart words to say. The that, only that, that's word, first time, that's first time. The only word I would say is, I'm really proud of this team. I'm really proud for those guys that they make first time to the final four, to the final. And they reach the goal. They read. This is written now history. I told them that it's written up there, that they have to win that. And they did with a heart, with a soul, with a determination. I'm happy for the management. I'm happy for Mr. For Mr. For Mr. Vatutin. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Yes. I'm very happy. You did it. And I'm proud for the management, for the club, for every supporter, for the management. It's, a, it's an amazing. We had some, some bad moments in the game, but we got a strong belief. Only like that. We Only got a like strong that. belief. I, I saw you after the game hugging Milos Teodosic right in the middle circle, and it was a very emotional exchange. I would say that. First of all, I hugged Mr. Obradovic and Zelko, a great person, a great coach. And I said that a, a big piece of that is his, although it's a bad moment now because he lost. I wouldn't be over here if he was not him. And that's big, and it's that's from my bottom of my heart. Coming to Milos, to Nando, I told him he has to win it. He changed everything, the way of practice, the way of attitude. I have and a captain, I have leaders in that team. Like Victor, it's written to be an important player on the court and win it and raise that trophy with proud now for Ceska. I'm proud for those 1,000 that they follow us and for those that they make uh, 10,000 and more. Excuse me, I'm emotional now. I, I really apologize to the fans, to the audience, but it comes from my heart. Enjoy the sweet victory. You deserve Thank it. Thank you. Thank you so much. There we heard from Dimitris Utudis, and as he said, it came from the heart, pouring out. He won five as an assistant coach with his opponent tonight, Joko Bradovic. But this is the first time, only his second year as a head coach in the EuroLeague that he has had to basically had to wrest it out of the hands of his mentor, who he gave much credit to in that interview. Gave him some credit for Seska's win because of how much he taught him, Jump up Radovich and Demetrius Atutis. And you will never see that probably on a court of basketball at this level ever because they were such a partnership. And now the young man has taken it from his mentor.
Schroeder. Who uh, left the early job as a head coach for the first time? This man, first of all, is nothing to be sorry about. There's nothing to apologize for. He did an amazing job. And right here, I'm sitting up looking at him. He's still coaching, Frank. He's talking to Demetrius Nichols who only played six seconds. Demetrius Nichols walked in the game with 6.2 seconds up. I saw him, and he just went up to Demetrius Nichols, and he just coached him. Even after the game, even after winning the title, he coached Demetrius Nichols and said, hey, you were a huge part of this. Even though you only played six seconds, you were a huge part of this. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. That's an amazing coach right there. Let's uh, take a second to uh, congratulate Fenerbahce Istanbul for giving us an incredible final by coming back with 20 points behind to put this game into overtime and fight right down to the last second of overtime. There's Nelly Matolu, their captain, who is taking the second place trophy, a much deserved award for that team. They didn't win a game at the Final Four last year. They won in overtime in this year's semifinal, and they took it to overtime in the final. You can't get any closer than Fenerbahce Istanbul did. And there is the announcement that Nando De Colo is the MVP of the Final Four after he put up 22 points with seven assists, three steals, and 11 fouls drawn. For Seska Moscow tonight, after having the record in a single game, uh, do or die game at the Final Four in the semifinal on Friday, and I believe that takes him to a new scoring record in the Final Four. Nando De Colo, and he's rewarded the MVP of the season, is now rewarded with the MP MVP trophy of the Final Four as well. So a clean sweep clean for sweep. Nando De Colo, which is very rare. And the scoring record. Absolutely amazing season for the Cologne. Scored more points uh, on average than all but two other players since the turn of the century in the, in the Euro League. And just was, I, I thought his laser focus was, of course, one of the reasons he became the MVP this season. But also, I think it, it spread throughout the team. They saw a guy who was not. You know, racking up the points and congratulating himself and you know enjoying it too much because he wanted to get to this moment tonight more than anything else and he never kept his eyes never never strayed from uh, the straight line that he wanted to take all the way here and I think you saw it with the rest of the team at this final four let's face it they've, they've faced adversity in this final four and, and, and what's happening now is exactly what you Play for exactly what you practice for, exactly what you eat well for, exactly what you work out on a daily basis for. To be handed that trophy and then lift it up over your head is just an amazing feeling. But there's always a feeling after this, Frank, that happened with me, is a little feeling of emptiness. It's like it's over. It's like everything you worked for for the last 10 months is over. But you're going to have a lot of fun tonight. You certainly <laughs> are. That. We see the uh, disappointed faces on the Fenerbahce people who are so close. We already talked about that man, Milos Teodosic, who suffered through six Final Four losses and finally has a chance to lift that trophy. Nando De Colo, the MVP, we saw before Vitaly Fritzen, uh, one of the Russian players who's had a chance a couple of years before, didn't make it as well. There's the president and CEO of Early basketball, Jordi Bertomeo handing out the trophies. Victor Kriapa played in 10 Final Fours, won one, but was not a protagonist. He made up for that tonight. Talk about a protagonist. He kept it into overtime. Hey, hey, you mentioned yeah. Ritson, who only played six minutes tonight, but he was such a valuable part of the semifinal. Here we see Demetrius Atutis getting his trophy from Jelko Ivad from uh, from Jordi Bertomeu, even behind him we see uh, Joel Freeland, their injured big man. They did this without one of the, maybe their biggest signing in the offseason, Joel Freeland. Their big man was not here when he was uh, when he was injured. Ilker Aitzi, the chairman of the board and executive committee of Turkish Airlines, of course the competition's title sponsor for the last six seasons, 
also helping out in the trophy ceremony as Dimitri Satoudis jacking up the Cesca crowd. They, they don't travel as much as some other teams because they're further away and, and so on, but they have a, a lot of love from their team for coming here, and they know that, that a lot of folks are waiting for them back home in Moscow to celebrate the seventh Turkish Airlines EuroLeague trophy in the history of Cesca Moscow. I just think uh, after making 13 of 14 Final Fours, 13 in the last 14 years, which is both the first longest streak, the first eight years, and this year it became the second longest streak, five more, is a testament to the quality top to bottom of this organization and how they do business and how they prepare a basketball team for greatness. And they may have been had some bad luck and lost on the last shots in the last few years, and that's part of the game. But they keep coming back, and they keep coming back until they won it tonight. And you have to, you have to just feel very, very uh, happy for everybody involved in that organization for what they did. Here's Victor Kriapa, came back from an injury, didn't play for a while. He will be the man lifting the trophy for Seska Moscow, the New York. Champions, we still got the base. Uh, I'm very proud of us because we work hard during all the season. Everybody thinks it's easy because we are CSK, but we need to fight day by day, game by game, and we did it. Well, I think that you had a lot of adversity with all the injuries to your front line. It was not an easy, easy season. No, it was a tough season, like every season. But like I say, this season we got a real team, and everybody fight for, for his teammate. What do you think about Milos Teodosic? He said, well, I finally got my first championship, but I don't care. I want more. I'm going to work hard. And I want more, too. Uh, he's a great player, and he fights along the season, so this is great, too. Congratulations. Thank enjoy. You. Thank you very much. Sometimes thousands of miles separate even the biggest fans from the biggest game. But what if the arena got bigger? as big as the entire world. Social Internet of Things technologies are transforming the individual experience into a social one. The fans at home will join the crowd on high-definition screens and speakers, 
by amplifying the in-stadium fans' excitement level. And how you celebrate on your couch will make its way into the arena. Who's fans are really the most excited and engaged? With IoT social technologies, wearables, smart clothes, video analytics, social platforms and unique virtual visualization, give your team that extra boost. And surrounded by legions of other fans, we all feel stronger. The world is the arena. Here we see some of the great images from our insider ref cam that we saw during the entire year. And this is the images of the celebration after Seska won it. After so long waiting, you see the view of that last moment from the referee's camera. Then he goes off the court, of course. And we continue with the celebration at Mercedes-Benz Arena in Berlin, Germany. Zeska Moscow lost one final here in 2009 on the last shot. They did not let that happen to them tonight. As you see, Dimitri Satuta is still holding the trophy and showing it off there. And we talked before to Nando de Colo, first French player to become uh, the MVP of the EuroLeague ever. For obviously, first French player to become the MVP. This is written now history. I told them that it's written up the there. Final four. And also, uh, the first French player to win the EuroLeague since Antoine Rigaudot in 2001. So 15 years of French. He, he talked about representing French basketball. He's represented European basketball in an incredible way all season. And he and his teammates, and let's give credit to Fenerbahce Istanbul, have put on a display of not only great basketball, but great heart tonight in an overtime championship game. Joe Arlovis did. I don't know if it could be matched very easily. I haven't seen much like this, Frank. This is just an incredible performance by two teams in the biggest stage of the year. And when you get those two teams coming together and doing it in the same atmosphere, the same venue at the same time, it's just an amazing thing. And it's what this EuroLeague basketball thing is all about. It's absolutely amazing. I had a great time this year. I really appreciate being here. And I love working with you, Frank. You can ask for anything more in a final, and next season you won't be asked for, able to ask for anything more in a basketball competition because the new EuroLeague will be back in a few months, creating more and more glory for basketball fans to watch. Thank you. It was a great season. Come back and join us in the fall. Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. No jump, no glory. Game of the Week, presented by Turkish Airlines, Doge Group, Seat, Intersport, and Turkey Home.